It's time for Windows Weekly, episode 174. Great guest coming up with Paul Thorat, Brandon Watson. Uh, he's in charge of managing developers, encouraging developers, evangelizing developers for the new Windows Phone 7. The latest on Windows Phone 7 and all the Microsoft news next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat, episode 174, recorded September 16th, 2010. Living the Wife Style. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Carbonite Pro. With prices starting at $10 a month, your office PCs can be backed up safely and automatically. For a free trial and to learn more, visit CarbonitePro.com. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers all things Redmondian. That is coming from the Microsoft region of the United States of America. And somebody <laughs> joining us right now from his home in uh, Dedham, as far away as possible from the Microsoft that's right, region. That's right. The man who writes the super site for Windows, windowsite.com, Windows IT Pro News Editor, and the author of many fine Windows Secrets books, including Windows Vista Secrets, Windows 7 Secrets, and the new upcoming, soon-to-be-released Windows Phone Secrets. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Paul Thorat. Yellow Leo. <laughs> there's, there's mild applause in the studio. Yeah, it sounds like someone's breathing into a phone like it's a... <laughs> One of those prank phone calls you used to get in the 70s. <laughs> Bomb, is that you? Hi. Hi. Paul, we got a guest on the show, so that's yes. why I'm, I'm giddy today, I admit. I, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, it's usually just the two of us. And he has nothing to say about that. We're going to mix it up today. We're going to myth it up. And uh, to do that, we are going to bring in a... Uh, this Is this fellow... The director of developer experience for Windows Phone 7. Is that correct? It's either that or he's a, a free agent outfielder. <laughs> formerly played for the Cincinnati Reds. It's, it's one of the two. <laughs> one of the two. We'll I hope, I hope it's the, the, the one from Microsoft. Because <laughs> otherwise something went horribly wrong. Oh, Leo, I just came to play. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you for know, the love of the game. For the love of the game. There's, a cup, there's two types of people you really don't want to interview. One is sports figures. Mm -hmm. The other is CEOs. Both yeah. are carefully trained to say many words without saying actually anything. In the case of athletes, not usually trained, but yes. <laughs> it comes natural. Well, we're going to have somebody who's actually, and we like to get people in here who are developers, who are engineers, who, who will actually uh, talk the talk. And so that's Brandon coming up in just a bit. Before we mm -hmm. do that, though, can I, can we, uh, are you excited? Can we talk about, because uh, people are finally seeing an IE9. Yeah. I'm really excited. Everybody's raving over it. And, you know, it's interesting because, honestly, IE hasn't been that interesting for a long time, right? No, I mean, it's infrastructure now. Yeah. And, you know, it's always, it's interesting to some level whenever Microsoft makes a new version of the browser because they still do dominate the industry, although obviously their overall share is falling. But actually, this browser is way better than it even needs to be. I mean, it's actually really... Kind of cool, yeah. So what's uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about it. Tell us about first about how it looks. It's it's a clean yeah. new interface, right? So on the surface, it looks a lot like Chrome, right? It's a very clean interface, um, it, but really it goes <laughs> kind of well beyond what Chrome does, even from just a look and feel standpoint. Um, and if you were to compare all of the major browsers side by side, which of course you can do on Windows. Um, what you'll discover is that IE9 actually takes up less space than any of them, which is really interesting. Hmm. And really in keeping with the ideals behind this release, which are similar to those from Windows 7 or from Windows Phone 7, which is that this thing that they've made is not the point. It's, it's how you get there to the things that matter to you, in this case, websites. So they really wanted to design IE9 to get out of the way, which I think is kind of cool. And it's something that the other browser makers... I'm not saying they can't do it, but I'm saying they probably won't do it because for for other browser makers, especially on Windows, you know, they're really trying to get you to adopt their product. So it's it's about the product, you know, whereas on Windows, 
uh, Microsoft really just cares that you get Windows. So, you know, they've turned IE into arguably what it should have been all along, which is something that just recedes into the background and then makes the websites, you know, the uh, or puts them up in center stage or whatever. So I think that stuff is cool. Now, if you're running on Windows 7, you also get some amazing integration features. And I think that's arguably the coolest part of IE9 from a functional standpoint, although obviously it also has all the standards compliance and the hardware acceleration and all that stuff they talked about before. But from a Windows perspective, what you get is this browser that really integrates with the OS in a way that is real, not fake, like it was for so long. And uh, it really makes websites first-class citizens next to Windows applications. You're not actually playing a hamster dance. <laughs> right? I'm sorry. I'm at the Internet Explorer 9 beta test drive page, and they have yeah. some performance examples. Right. How are those working in Chrome? Well, they're working in Chrome on Mac at about 11 <laughs> frames per second. How, how, does yeah, it, yeah. how does it work on IE9? Probably a, a it's lot. It's significantly faster. Yeah, we took actually quite a long time just to watch the beginning Right, right. Yeah. So uh, just a warning, if you're photosensitive, you might experience a seizure while watching the following video. Yeah, but if you've been watching this podcast, you're probably used to that. <laughs> if you haven't had a seizure yet. So this is, this is the slow and boring version and, uh, right. in, in Chrome. So is it appreciably faster in uh, IE9? Of course, after, yeah, after the demos all, are, of course. These, of are, course. these are carefully I'm, crafted. I'm more concerned with the real world, right? right I mean, right. so obviously any browser maker could make demos that show off. Um, their sites. But I, I think what's exciting about what Microsoft has done from a performance standpoint is that it benefits everyone automatically that, you know, sites don't have to be rewritten, that they're just using the underlying capabilities of the GPU and the hardware uh, acceleration that's available there that has been available previously to Windows applications, but now it's available on the web. So I think when you put that in, in tandem with the Windows 7 integration pieces where you can uh, pin Websites to the taskbar, they have jump lists, they have taskbar previews. Um, you can do arrow snap with the different tabs in the browser and so forth. What Microsoft has created is this situation where websites and applications sit side by side in Windows, just like they do logically in our minds. Because, you know, in my case, I use Gmail all day long. I use Microsoft Word all day long. One of those things is a website. One of those things is a Windows application. But really, they're just applications to me. They're things that I used to get work done and why why shouldn't they be the same uh, inside of windows and now they are you know with ie9 it's actually really it's it's obvious in retrospect and you have to kind of wonder why this hasn't occurred before but then you realize again because from the perspective of the browser makers they don't you know google doesn't want and apple doesn't want and mozilla certainly doesn't want on windows a situation where the thing that you've downloaded from them recedes into the background they want you to think about their browser you know, so they, they overload these things with lots of UI and so forth. And it's interesting that in IE9, Microsoft finally has figured out. I say finally like I knew this was obvious. It was not obvious to me. But once you see it, it becomes, you know, apparent how excellent this approach is that the browser doesn't have to be the centerpiece. The browser is the vehicle, you know, that you get to the destination from. It's not the destination itself. You really got to get a Windows Seven thing going. I know. I'm, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to figure out some way to run Windows Seven here. It really just, is. It is I, really, really. I have you know one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven Windows machines around me. More than half of the machines around me are Windows, but they're all XP. You know. Wait. So this is like, only run, it must run on Vista. It's Vista and Seven, but okay. you don't get all of the integration pieces with Vista because Vista doesn't have right. some of those capabilities that you have in Seven. I guess I'll get a Windows 7 machine. I don't know where I'll put it. <laughs> I'm kind of running out of room here. Um, well, I really we'll do. I should have a Windows 7 machine. You know what I could do is I could dual boot one of these uh, one of these Macs and make it because Macs actually make pretty good Windows 7 machines. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> I'll, true. I'll just make a dual boot out of this thing and then we could do it. It's okay. it, the reason we're using XP on almost everything is because most of the software we use. Sad to say. Right. Uh, runs better in Windows uh, XP or doesn't run at all in Windows 7. Yep. And some of the driver software and so forth. So we kind of need to do it that way. I apologize. It's a classic tale. <sighs> it's a classic, classic tale. Sad but true. All right, we're going to talk to uh, Brandon Watson in just a little bit, Director of Development, or I'm sorry, Developer Experience for Windows Phone 7. He's the guy in charge of getting people to write for Windows Phone 7. Right. We'll have to find out how that's going. 
Well, based on the, what they've been saying so far, <laughs> I, I think it's going that, pretty well. I'm guessing it's going really well. I think it's yeah. going pretty well. Uh, I think the real challenge will be not mm -hmm. to get people to develop for it, but some key, it's really the key apps, right, isn't it? you got to have a Twitter app. You have to have a Facebook app. Well, we'll ask, Brandon. Right. What are the challenges? You know, I think it's okay if you don't have... You yeah, know, you don't have to have 225,000 apps at launch, but right. you want to have representative apps. Well, you got to have documents to go. You got I mean, there's just yeah. some things you have to this have. This was something that the Palm didn't have. Right. And it killed right them. Right when WebOps came out, yeah. It killed them. It wasn't that there were only 5,000 apps. It was that I think the that few companies sent, yeah, they just spent every cent they had getting the platform out. And they exactly. just couldn't make it happen from well, then from then on. that's yeah. what Brandon's job is. Brandon's yes. job is to make sure those special, special apps are there. And we'll talk to him in just mm -hmm. a little bit. Before we do, though, I want to mention our friends at Carbonite. We've talked many times, <laughs> we talk many times about Carbonite, the consumer edition. That's a very popular. In fact, so much so that Carbonite found out a lot of small businesses were using it for their business. Why would they do that? Well, because Carbonite offers something that most backup software doesn't. Automatic, so you don't have to ever think about it. Off-site backup now why is it important that it be automatic well that should be pretty apparent because nobody ever remembers to do it why should it be off-site well that may not be as obvious in fact i bet you a lot of you listening say oh no i'm backed up see that hard drive right next to my computer i just back up to that and it's automatically oh let me tell you something just imagine you know we uh, uh fire flood earthquake tornado uh user error can easily trash your backup at the same time as you lose your originals. Burglar breaks in, they're not going to say, oh, I'll just take the computer and leave the backup drive. They're going to take it all, baby. And if you're running your business on that and your backup's gone, just as a, now here's a little thought exercise, a little thought experiment in the uh, spirit of Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking. Imagine, and, uh, and Carl Malden, imagine <laughs> somebody takes all your data and all your backups and you don't have any other backups your businesses computers are gone what will you do what will you do well if you don't have a backup you might be going out of business to be honest with you how would you reconstruct all that data so off-site is really critical now especially so if uh, if you're going to do it off-site that you get be able to get that data back as quickly as if it were on-site that you uh, have some, you know, faith that the data is there. And even more importantly, and I think this is, this is something I look for in a backup program, uh, you can get it back anytime, anywhere. And that's where Carbonite's really great. A lot of times you back up, you've got to first reinstall the operating system, then reinstall the backup software, and then you can restore, right? Not with Carbonite. If you lose, your, if you lose a file, you can log on to the Carbonite account from any computer, get that file back. They even have an iPhone, free iPhone and BlackBerry app, so you're never more than a few keystrokes away from your data. So that's the, that's the talking points for Carbonite. Carbonite Pro takes it to business in, in a lot of the things that you need. For instance, a single uh, uh, centralized dashboard that monitors all of the backups. You can have backup. You don't pay by user like a lot of business software requires you to pay per seat. No, you pay just for the data storage. So it's very economical. I'll give you an example. Prices start at $10 a month. If you have eight computers, each with five gigs of backup, and, you know, for a business computer, that's probably all you're going to have is spreadsheets and documents. That's 25 bucks a month for eight seats. Uh, 18 computers, five gigabytes each of backup, $50 a month. I mean, this is for line of business software that could save your butt. This is nothing. Carb, you could try it free right now. Just see how it fits into your, uh, your IT needs. You don't have to be an IT pro to use it. That's another great thing. You don't have to have an IT department. CarbonitePro.com is the website to go to. CarbonitePro.com. Sign up today for 30 days absolutely free. Starts as low as $10 a month, but your first month is, uh, is absolutely free. And Windows, by the way, only for the business side. They do have a Mac version for the consumer side, and they are working on a Mac version in the business side. But, you know, I think most people uh, in business, certainly us, all of the all the financials and everything are all in Windows. CarbonitePro.com. Join over 100,000 business users who trust their most important data to Carbonite. And we thank you for your support. Are you ready? Shall we get our guest on here? Absolutely. All right, let me do it. See if Skype is working. 
Technology has never failed us, Leo. <laughs> Technology cannot fail us. Feats don't fail me now. Hey, Brandon. Hey, how's it going? Hey, look, sounds great. <laughs> wow, look at that. Look at that. Amazing. It's looking great. It's not using that new Microsoft 1080p camera, though. I could tell that right now. Right about the... Hey, Brandon. Uh, I, I haven't made it over to the company store. I spent all my time playing Halo Reach. I, I got oh. out of that box. And, yeah. are, are you, how, how do you like it? Uh, I got to be honest with you, like Paul, I have a bit of a Call of Duty uh, a problem, mm. although I don't have level 11 or whatever insane level Paul's gotten to. But, uh, it's, it's not uh, a problem Halo in is, my case. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a way of life. It's a way of life. It's a it's benefit. A, it's an yeah. asset. So that's so, right. So, but no, Paul uh, played yeah, Halo. Game. Paul plays Halo, right, Paul? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, um, have you got? Have you played Halo Reach yet, Paul? I yeah. I just finished the campaign today. Oh, shut up! It's not that long. Oh, shut up! But see, the thing is, you know, most people play online uh, the multiplayer stuff, and Paul, most I people would be have like jobs. a little girl, <laughs> well, <laughs> defenseless in that world. Yeah, we're all little girls in, f in the face of ten-year-old. Yeah. Scamers. Yeah, we've been playing last night. We had a we had a release to get out this morning, so I I unfortunately didn't get any sleep last night. Yeah, and for all the wrong reasons. Well, for all the right reasons. <laughs> so, Brandon, I really no, want to. No. You had it right the first time. I really want to thank you for joining us. It's really great uh, as we get ready for the release of Windows Phone Seven uh, to talk to you. You tell us about your job. You're in the developer program. Uh, I run developer marketing and, and ecosystem for Windows Phone Seven. So I, yeah. I actually started my career at Microsoft in 94 uh, as an intern. Wow. Uh, left in 99 uh, to go off and do the dot-com thing and, and uh, play the script out. Where you shook a tree and a VC with a bag of money fell out and everybody made millions. Uh, my That was not the movie I was in, apparently. <laughs> you got the empty <laughs> bag. That's right. I got the other I got the other achievement. Um, and then I uh, wandered off to Wall Street. And you got, some, were you going to uh, say, I got the tea bag? Come on, say the, tell us the truth. I, I think he was shooting for futility. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was yeah, exercising futility, but it was it was a good learning experience. But it was yeah. definitely a weird, weird time for those of us old enough to remember that period. Um, and then I wandered off to Wall Street for a while. They did a startup. Uh, it was one of our portfolio companies, and then started my own company and sold it. Uh, and when we moved back to Seattle, uh, my wife decided she wanted to move back to Seattle. And for what I this is a trademark phrase for what I call wife style reasons. Uh, I came back to Microsoft. It's, uh, it was definitely a, a good wife style choice. I'm, wait a minute, that's uh, a great now, phrase. I love that. I'm writing that down, <laughs> and I'll give you credit for it. Uh, oh, there you go. So yeah, so now uh, I came back to work on the Azure stuff and had been running dev marketing for our enterprise and cloud offerings, and then uh, was identified as a potential candidate to help lead the uh, developer marketing effort for Windows Phone Seven. And I saw the product for the first time in November and was a complete believer in convert. Even then, I jumped at the opportunity. It's it's just the coolest thing I've ever worked on, and it's probably the most important thing I've ever done in my career. It's just it's been great. So I, I have to ask you a personal question. You must have to put up with Charlie Kendall on a regular basis. <laughs> is that yeah. is that horrible or is that what's yeah. that like? You know, it's it's a funny thing. I, I've I've known Charlie for a long time, uh, and he's the one who identified me for this role. Um, oh, so it must be fantastic. Oh, well, no, so he's now my boss. And and so it's fun because he and I are very similar in a lot of ways, but very different in a lot of ways. And we complement each other in terms of our skill set. Um, but Charlie, is he's a unique character, and he's a guy you can learn a lot from. He's a guy that inspires. He's a great visionary. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you look at what he did with the Windows Home Server, which I hear you talking about all the time, it's, uh, yep. you know, he, he knows how to build great product and get community spun up around uh, the product. So he's, he's doing a really good job around community building. Uh, we have a lot more to do around Phone Seven than uh, than just the community, but it's he's a, he's a great asset to the company. I'm actually learning a lot of working for him, so it's been great. Paul and I yeah. were uh, Paul and I were uh, talking before you uh, came on. I don't know if you heard, mm -hmm. and, and we were talking about uh, the challenge of getting developers to write for a new platform. Obviously, it's it's a great challenge. I think you've done very well. I mean, just seeing the games already, uh, people have announced for it and so forth. But the key, isn't it? Uh, we 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 posited that the key is not number of applications, but getting the right applications on the platform. The applications people kind of expect that you have a Twitter app, a Facebook app, that kind of thing. Is that is that accurate? I, it, it, well, so you're asking two questions. One is 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 the right metric number of apps or quality of apps? Right. Apps. And then the other question is how do you get people to go over the phone? Right. right. Those are actually two separate questions. Yep. So uh, I my answer when asked, uh, you know, how many apps we're going to have at launch? My, my first question is always. 
you know, be honest with me. Do you really believe it's number of apps that matters or the quality of apps? And everyone always says quality of apps. Uh, and then I kind of look at them. I say, how many apps do you have on your phone? And, you know, they'll pull out their phone, whether it's an iPhone or Android, and they'll say, oh, I have, I don't know, 25 apps. I'll say, that's the right number of apps we need in the store. It doesn't well, matter how many apps I have. If it's the or right apps. apps you, you don't want. Right. It's the, but, well, it's so, the number of apps that you need. Right. But so to refine my question, them. just a little bit to refine the question, it, it, th there are key apps, would you not agree, that you have to have? I totally agree. Absolutely. And yeah. we, we, so when, when Paul brings up Charlie, right? So Charlie's team is made up of uh, two separate pillars, right? One is focused on the depth engagements, and that's the managed relationships with the guys that we got to have. These are the, you know, high touch engagements, working with these guys, offering up technical support, making sure we got the UX guys spending time with the development teams outside of Microsoft and, and really giving them everything they need to be very, very successful. And these are the brand names that we said we got to have, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, Yelp, you, you name it, right? Uh, it, the, the who's who of the list. But then, to be honest, it, that's going to be maybe 2% of the catalog. And so there's a lot of developers out there who want that moment where they, you know, they write their code and they pull out their phone and they say, look, you know, look what I did. Here's my app and let me show it to my buddy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of those guys. Uh, and that's my job is to, is to go get those guys excited and, uh, and make sure that we're, you know, got the tools out, uh, that we've got the framework and the messaging and all that stuff, doing all the ARPR, the analyst relations, press relations, all that stuff I get to do. But then really focusing on ensuring that we're doing all the right things for the breadth community, uh, the guys that, you know, maybe won't have a managed relationship with Microsoft, but we need them to be fired up and excited about the opportunities for Windows Phone 7. So uh, can we talk a little bit about what happened today? I know you folks uh, RTM the developer tools, which is awesome, but there were a bunch of changes in there too. And can you speak a little bit to, you know, what's changed yeah. with the new release and so forth? Yeah, so as you, you know, the RTM tools uh, going out today is a huge achievement. I mean, I, I said on Twitter this morning, the engineering team are my heroes. I mean, it's, it's, this has been quite a journey, and to have the tools done, uh, if you're a developer building apps, this is the version you need to to build your app that's going to be submitted to the marketplace, so it'll be accepted. Um, when we released the tools at Mix in 2000, uh, early 2010, we thought we had everything developers would need, right? We're a company of developers for developers. We build dev tools all day long. We thought we thought we knew what they wanted, um, and we showed this great new user experience on the phone, the panorama and the pivot, and 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 the ability to build these really rich, engrossing applications. Uh, but we didn't have those controls as part of the uh, the tool set uh, in the first version of the of the dev tools. And so the community let us know, hey guys, we you know we really need this, and if you're not going to make it for us, we're going to build it ourselves. Uh, and so we took that to heart, and in this the final release, which we didn't have in beta, we actually have a panorama control. Uh, which is think of it as a landscape. You can create a I'll put a lot of data on a landscape, and the phone then becomes a lens that you know, moves around. Uh, a pivot control, uh, which is an easy way to do filtering of data. It's kind of like uh, you know pivot tables in Excel, but you know create take your own data set and, and apply a filter to it. And it makes it really easy f for developers to do that. Uh, and then Bing Maps, uh, we we put that control in there. So anyone who's building any any uh, app that requires mapping or directions or any, any geospatial stuff, it, we have a commercial free license. Uh, big maps control in there. So oh, anyone cool. who wants to go build apps mobile, it's it's pretty pretty killer. Um, so that's what came out in the dev tools today. And then also the mobile advertising guys today released their SDK, which is uh, our first party ad tool that's tied to Ad Center. So any developer who wants to make money on their apps by selling ads, they can use a, a our ad control, which is tied to Ad Center. Which the really really cool thing about this, there's two pieces. It's there's an uh, the ad network is a bitted exchange. So at the time you make the, the ad unit makes the call, we actually hit three different ad exchanges and pull down the ad that's going to get you, the developer, the most money. Uh, but we also utilize the live ID because when you set up the phone for the first time, we take your live ID. And because Bing has all of this, you know, kind of intent data about you tied to your live ID, we actually utilize that when we're servicing up those ads as well. Uh, so as a developer, you get access to all of that intent data that exists within the Bing ecosystem uh, for free. So that's actually pretty cool. How, how does the ad stuff work in a Windows Mobile, or I'm sorry, Windows Phone app, um, having not seen any of it or understanding even how it works? I mean, I've seen ads in some iPhone games now. I've seen them in Android apps. Is it a similar sort of thing where you get a, optionally a pane or whatever in the application? Or, I mean, how does that work? Yeah, right now it's a standard ad, ad unit, just kind of a little box that you drop in, and, and you can handle the the, show, the the showing and the hiding, whether you want to stick it in a, in a panel that slides up and down or an ever-persistent panel. It's up to you. Uh, the developer, but right now it's just a, a just an ad unit that you drop into the UI and and just it serves up ads whenever you need them. Then okay. you can make it come and go as you wish programmatically. Right, right. Tell me about the uh, the development uh, process. First of all, um, 
Anybody can get this new uh, RTF. It's free, right? Uh, RTM, yeah, it RTM, is free. I mean. The dev tools will they'll always be free. It includes Visual Studio 2010 for Windows Phone, uh, the Phone Emulator, uh, Expression Blend, which is the design tool, uh, and there's one other thing. Oh yeah, X and A Game Studio. So anything you need to build a Silverlight or an app or a game for Windows Phone 7 is free. Will always be free and supported by the company. So anybody can develop for Windows Phone 7. You just get the software. Even a dumb marketing guy like myself can write apps. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and developing the uh, the uh, GUI for developing is it similar to Visual Visual Basic say or Visual Studio? Uh, it's Visual Studio, I know, but is it similar to Visual Basic? Yeah, I mean, so it's all XAML based, right? Anyone who's familiar with Silverlight knows the the really uh -huh. rich and engaging uh, user interfaces you can build with Silverlight, and that's one of the values of Silverlight. And so we brought that to the phone, uh, and it's all XAML based, which is a XML based language uh, for doing user interfaces. Uh, and so we've got the design surface within Visual Studio, as well as the ability to take that same XAML code, open the same project in Blend, and, and really have a design-focused tool for working on your app versus doing it in Visual Studio, which is more geared towards guys who are writing code. And then what about the process of getting the apps to users? There's an app store? Uh, we're going to have a marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be opening for ingestion for developers in the first week of October, or early October, I believe that's what we're saying. Um, and what that process will look like is you will go, once you're a registered developer, you go to developer.windowsphone.com and you register uh, as a developer. It's a one time, uh, once a year, $99 fee. Uh, you'll be able to ingest apps. Uh, you can go to your dashboard and see where your apps are in the certification process. It's a very uh, clear and open uh, communication process with developers. We believe they, they deserve to be communicated <laughs> why, with in a why fair is way. That? I wonder why you'd want to do that. I mean, <laughs> come on. Developers, what do they need? What do they know? Yeah, it's, you know, it's just a respect thing. And, uh, you don't we're, spin we're a roulette wheel and see what comes up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we actually, we were flipping a coin for a while until we realized we had a two-headed coin and everything was getting through, so we had to fix that <laughs> process. But, uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it, you know, we try to be very open about our policies and, and you know, look, bring on the fart apps. Every developer deserves that moment where they show their, their buddy what they built, even if it's a fart app. We're not going to ban apps based on, you know, what, what would the web look like if search engines said, no, we're not going to index you because we have enough travel sites. I mean, that's just silly. So what will you vet them for? Uh, I mean, obviously we're looking for uh, it doesn't crash and, and you don't have, uh, you know, exploding body parts. And there's, there's, you know, we have a very clear set of policies as to what we're looking for. It's very, uh, you know, don't do dumb things, right? You don't, don't send private confidential information. Uh, we look for security. Uh, the apps themselves on Windows Phone 7 are sandboxed in the in the Silverlight environment uh, in XNA, so they can't really do things. They have isolated storage. They can't get at personal data. But we also make sure that they're not actually trying to root the phone or do anything like that. It's actually very difficult to do if, if possible at all, but uh, it, people will try. What's, what's the uh, app release schedule going to look like after Windows Phone becomes available? Obviously, you'll have some sort of a a uh, collection of apps and games and so forth on, on the day that, or whatever, or whenever it launches. But, you know, uh, is there going to be an every Tuesday kind of thing, or is it a rolling basis? Or how how often will new apps appear, or do you even know? Uh, yet, yes, you know, going Tuesday forward. for the win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, it's rolling, right? I mean, as apps come through the certification process and they get verified, the second they're they're verified, and we're not going to hold on to an app and make somebody sit and wait okay, for so it. Okay, so they can go live. Around before they can start. On. Oh, yeah. They go live okay. the second they get certified. Yeah. Uh, and and I mean, so uh, we're, we're targeting. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. I was going to say, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to target, uh, I think we've said five days is kind of, it's not an SLA, but five days is the turnaround we're working for, uh, for apps once you ingest. And, and if you do get rejected, it, we, we send you a list saying, here's why you were rejected. Fix these things. If you fix these things and change nothing else, you will be certified. Because uh, again, it's it's just respecting developers' time and, and effort. And I, I don't know uh, how much you know about this in particular, but I, I know that in... Uh, in the context of game creation for Windows Phone, that there are obviously Windows Live games, and then there are going to be other games that don't take it, you know, that aren't Windows Live, but there's still games that can run on the platform. Do you, you have a Xbox handle Live? on? Yeah, what did I say? I, or, yeah, so it does, uh, right. So you'll have Xbox Live games, and then you'll have yep. games that are not Xbox Live compliant or whatever. Um, Correct. Do you, is 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 there an easy way to describe what the differences are? And do you have a handle yet on? you know, uh, maybe from a percentage basis, you know, how many submissions you think you're going to be getting that are non-Xbox Live versus Xbox Live and so forth? Well, so 
to do Xbox Live now, you have to be a managed relationship with our uh, with our Xbox team, right? the guys that manage all the games, and and that is a very select group of folks, uh, and you have to qualify. And it's definitely a high bar to get access right. to that right now. Obviously, uh, for things like matchmaking and access to the friends list and and uh, asynchronous turn based games and things of that nature that take advantage of the of the huge server farm that we've got right that the network that we've built, uh, we we do want to make that available to all game developers and it's not available at launch but we're certainly working towards making it available to anybody who wants to take advantage of those services uh, no matter how small the developer because everyone I mean again as your if you're a developer. Uh, why wouldn't you want to take advantage of all these great services that Microsoft has available? I mean, if you really think about all the things that we have for a developer being Xbox Live, Office, I mean, there's a lot of services that we can bring to bear for a developer that they can take advantage of. Uh, right, we right. want them to be able to take advantage of those things. So at launch, it's it's really a very select group of folks, but we're going to be expanding that over time. Okay. And then, you know, you mentioned the hub thing, and, and one of the things I think that's going to be interesting about Windows Phone going forward is to see whether or how often developers take advantage of the hubs that are built into Windows Phone and extend them with their own functionality. I mean, do you have a handle for the, you know, the kinds of things that are happening along those lines? Are we going to see things like, uh, you know, the ability to edit, edit photos, perhaps that's, you know, is not an application, but it's something that's built into the pictures hub, for example, or anything along yeah, those lines? So there's already one app uh, that I've played with that somebody submitted. You know, I, I actually get to uh, a lot of people send me a link, say, hey, check this thing out. I'm a yeah. Joe Blow developer. I want, you know, want your feedback. Uh, and one guy has an app that it's a, it's a, it's not a photo editor so much as it is a photo FX applier, mm -hmm. uh, doing things like sepia and black and white and color toning and you drag your finger and do all that stuff. And that integrates with the picture hubs. So that was pretty cool. Uh, we demoed Netflix for the first time in public last night. We actually posted the videos up at uh, Channel 9. Of the of the demos we showed last night in public, and Netflix was one of them, and they integrate with the uh, the movie hub, the Zoom Hub, uh, so no, it does you pause okay. video and you go into there. Yeah, it's it's in there, and so does the uh, so does YouTube Video Playback that integrates with the uh, with the Video Hub as well. So their their developers are going to figure out how to take advantage of these things, and they will. So was the YouTube uh, application or add-in or whatever it's called that you mentioned? Is that was that actually made by Google or was that by a third-party developer who just oh no, it's not, stitches the two it's sides not together? YouTube. No, it's not YouTube apps. I mean, it's it's if you go to YouTube.com, we'll, we play the videos. It's there's no YouTube yeah. app we, that we've announced. If you just go to YouTube, you can play videos. <laughs> I never understood, to be honest, why you needed a YouTube app. I guess Apple does, but I think that that's perfectly s simple. So you yeah. support, and I guess that would be the next question. It supports Flash, obviously, if you're going to be able to do that. Well, no, we don't. So it's no, uh, it's H.264. Um, I. Uh, now I'm stumped. I that I don't want to say. I'll yes ask no. somebody else. Uh, some other I, I just I, I know you can hit play in the movie and, and it, it plays. plays. It's not flash. Not much I can tell. It's probably yeah. It plays. It, it plays. Stuff. That's all we care about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the video stuff. It, it's you know obviously very important, and and that's one of the questions people are asked. Leo, to your point, it's you know it's the right apps, right? Does it have Twitter? Yes, it does. Does it have Netflix? Yes, it does. Facebook. Does it have? You know, I can play YouTube. Does it have Facebook? Yeah, it's integrated with Facebook. Sure. Yeah. That that's exactly it, and and I presume. Uh, it has very good support for Microsoft's own stuff, like Office. Is Office support built in, yeah. or do I need a third-party app? Oh, no, it's you built need in. My book. Great. <laughs> <laughs> plug, plug it, Paul. Go ahead. Go ahead. Plug the book. It is built in. Let me tell you all about it. No, <laughs> of course it is. I'm just. I, that's called a softball question. <laughs> I was say, next thing you know, we're going to be talking about Audible. Um, <laughs> is Audible in there? The is it? No, it's not. Yeah. It's it's not. I, I tease. I, I'm a big fan of the show. I actually listen every week. I've got a regular schedule. Saturday night or Sunday is when I listen to Windows Weekly, and Monday on the way to work because I get the the Twit. Uh, awesome. Sunday night is Monday Thank on the way to work is when I listen to to Twit. So I'm actually. I, 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 to me, this is actually one of those things where I'm, I'm going to go home and the, the most important thing I've done today when I talk to my wife, she's going to want to know about the launch of the product. I'm like, <laughs> wait, I, I, I was I was talking to Leo. I was. That's, I, that's, I, that's, I, that's, I was talking Windows Weekly. Come on, forget for, for, for about the launch. Forget about the launch. So. Um, no, not uh, out of the box, not Audible support for Audible books. Uh, not out of the box, no. Okay. But Zoom certainly. has that, so I presume it's not such a difficult thing, and it will happen yeah. at some point. Yeah. No, How about and this is a big one, and I think this might be carrier specific. Skype. Uh, Skype will come. The managed platform at launch doesn't support sockets. Now that's a, it's a really nerdy topic, but what that means is for Skype to work, it'd be very difficult uh, at launch. There's ways to make it work, of course, because we. At, at, outside of the managed platform we use sockets for doing all kinds of stuff so uh, we want skype as a as an app on the phone we're figuring out the right way to make that work but the managed platform which we put in place to ensure that users have a great experience on the phone uh, and things like battery drain don't occur it's 
address. I just heard uh, a Windows Phone sound, sound over there. Uh, I didn't yeah. hear it. I don't know what that is. What is that? I don't know what that sound was. Go ahead, Brandon. Show us. Show us. Let's see it. Uh, this is this is a test device. So these are the Samsungs that you see in a lot of reviews. That I think Paul had one of these as well yeah. uh, that he was writing his book with. But it, it's funny in my building because all the everyone's got the phone. Uh, and we we'll yeah, have you know, 15 up. minutes to the hour. When you get the reminder, it's, you can hear it going down the hallway. <laughs> it's, like <laughs> kind of Doppler effect. Yeah. it's pretty yeah. funny. Uh, so now I want to hear uh, more about this managed uh, platform. What is exactly? Uh, so managed code is, is, is Silverlight, right? I mean, it's you don't have raw access to the hardware, right? You can't just it. write So it's a layer. In the, yeah. Um, and so with that, there's things that we allow and things that we don't allow. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure we could have a discussion about the things that people say we don't have on the phone. But uh, it, but, it's but, just it makes it easier for developers to build stuff when you've got a managed platform. Right. So you're just much more productive with your code. It's also easier for security because you have a layer in between the hardware and the software. You got it. Yeah. Right. So in, a, in an anything goes world of, of, say, a smartphone manufacturer that doesn't have a spec and allows raw access to the hardware, thing, bad things can happen. Uh, and that may be what a customer wants, and that's fine. Based on our research and based on the feedback we got from customers and based on our own experience in mobile, we believe that customers want a phone that has good battery life and performs the way they expect it and doesn't, that you don't need a task manager to manage what your phone's doing. Right. No, I think that's really uh, right. important. And I think there is that geek contingent, many of whom listen to this show or, or other shows. But in the real world... People want the phone to work. They want the phone yeah. to ring. They want to be able to pick Silly up the consumers. phone. Silly consumers. Wow. So, of I, course. You know, my, the, 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 the PR guys will get mad at me for, for saying something like this. But, I mean, look, you know, we get a copy and paste as a reason to not buy the phone. I kind of shrug my shoulders and go, I would think not being able to make a phone call is a reason not to buy a phone. Mm -hmm. But, you know, who might I judge? Right? So, I don't know. Uh, anybody who would sell a phone, phone that doesn't uh, get excellent reception and... <laughs> In all yeah, cases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not in this day and age. Yeah, that's no, crazy. no one would do that. Never. Never. No, we, we, we just, we've really focused on the end, end user experience. And it's got to be, it's got to be a great experience. I mean, from the, as, as being responsible for the app platform, if the phone doesn't work, developers can't sell apps because there won't be phones to sell them to. And if the apps don't work, customers will blame Microsoft. They won't blame the app developers. So we have to walk that line of being really careful about making sure it's a great experience for everybody. Uh, and I think we've done a good job. I mean, obviously, the market will tell us soon, but I think, you know, based on feedback so far and the excitement level as developers, we, we've done a we've done a good job. We're, we're very cautiously optimistic, but very happy with the achievements that we've made here. Yeah, I, I think Windows Phone is awesome. And I don't to say that because I'm trying to sell a book. I, I <laughs> try to be realistic about that. But I kept, you know, like, as I've said it probably on the podcast before, I as I learned more about it, I kept waiting for this aha moment where like, OK, well, this is where it falls apart. But actually. I, I think it's fantastic. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm always looking for the next thing. You know, I want to know, um, you know, if there's going to be a launch and if so, when and, and what happens next and how, you know, sure. and I realize you're not here to talk about any of that stuff. So I'm going to try to hold off on that. But, you know, I'm always wondering, you, you know, know, it's going to be the next handful of weeks are going to be exciting. Uh, there's, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. stuff and every week we'll have something to talk about. But you, you, you talk about you're waiting for the other shoe to drop or the other thing to break. And, and for me, I, I always look for the, the things that make me giggle. And, and that sounds kind of... Mm -hmm. Girly, I guess, but uh, you know, <laughs> whenever I open, whenever I open my phone and I see my little avatar kind of poking in from the side and then the Xbox yeah, Live logo knocks right. it down, it just it makes me smile. I don't know why. I, I can't explain. That's it. That's exactly what I've written about. Yeah. Through. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, the smile moments. Uh, yeah, no, that, and that's one of the reasons why Windows Phone is so awesome because it okay. does these things where you just kind of look at it, you think this is so you know neat. It's the little things like that pocket to picture kind of feature or whatever where it's like right, yeah, you know. They really yeah. thought this thing through. Makes sense. It's nice. What, yeah, yeah, you know, I was... Oh, go ahead. I, well, I'm going to ask maybe a little more a challenging question, but what what, <laughs> what, what niche uh, does does Windows Phone uh, 7 uh, fit into? I mean, you're, you're entering a very vibrant, exciting market, but you, but as, as uh, Steve Ballmer himself said, you, you kind of laid into the cycle here. You got the iPhone and, and Android um, phone fighting it out. Tell me, tell me what you see Windows Phone Seven. Are, are you going to go right after these guys? Are you going to look at the business market? Where do you, where do you see it? How do you see it playing out, Brandon? Uh, you know, the, you know, the consumerization of IT has been a pretty clear trend over the last you handful bet. of years, and and consumers have made it clear they want a phone that they buy and take to work. They don't want a phone anymore that work gives them and they take home. Oh, uh, and oh we, I love that. Say that again. That's great. You're saying the they want to choose their phone, not business, not the not not the office. Right. That's right. And, and so in that way, we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll admit we missed the mark and, and, and Apple, they have a good product. 
and they, they made a good product, and that's great. And they they capitalized on that trend early. Um, but to it is, I, I just I it it's hard for me to listen when people say, oh well, there's already two competitors, no one else can play here. Okay, I guess. I mean, that doesn't make sense when you've got six billion people on the planet, and a lot of these guys are eventually going to want phones, and not everybody has. I mean, it's just it's the the market is so big and the opportunity is so large. It's just silly to think that only two players are going to play here. Um, and you know, when people first talked about a competitor to Apple, who's going to be a competitor? No one can compete with Apple, and now it's how's Apple going to compete with Android? They're being outsold in the U.S. That's you know, oh my gosh. So there's lots of opportunity here, and I think if you build a great product, phone or otherwise, if you build a great product, you'll sell it. And people will want to talk about it. And that's we can either focus on worrying about what the competition is doing or just focus on what customers want and building a great product. And when you do that, good things will happen. And uh, and from uh, our chat room, Graybix wants to know, um, will it blend? Oh, not the chat room. Will it not blend? The chat room. <laughs> will it blend? <laughs> At least the chat room. Will it blend? <laughs> You know, it's it's it funny. Blend, I uh, <laughs> I'm I'm the guy who uh, is always who's always kind of with these harebrained like, hey, why don't we do this? And then someone <laughs> says, no, 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 don't do that. Uh, I would love to find out if it blends. Unfortunately, that's that gets very expensive when there's multiple. Uh, we have multiple handsets, right, across all right. these different OEM providers. One, all, one, all one will do. Handset providers. <laughs> uh, but you know what? Maybe you know what you know what I'll do. Maybe uh, when I get my release phone, because I have my eye on one specific handset, I know exactly which one I want. But when I get that one, uh, when we go availability. Uh, I'll take I'll take my test phone. Uh, if uh, Scoble or somebody wants to bring a blender to the office, I'll, uh, I'll be happy to drop it in there and, uh, and video it. I'd, I'd be happy to do it. There's one application I'm really counting on um, having available. Uh, uh, it's going to have the word farm isn't, in it. Isn't no, it? no. Day and, day and date of ship. You better have. This is Dimitri Leon. I think he's been in contact awesome? with you. He is doing isn't a Twitter awesome? application. And do you think we'll get it out day and date? Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited. I mean, this is. This is a YouTube video. A lot of people have been posting YouTube videos with the tag WP7Dev. Uh, and so you can see a lot of uh, code running in the emulator. Uh, look at this and then look at what you can get from other platforms. And you tell me whether or not you think this is a beautiful, amazing, engaging experience. This, this is what we want, I have to say. And this is that, and this I, is that panorama view. That's incredible, mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. And, and just so we're clear, I mean, it's, it's running in the emulator here, and that's fine. I want to be very crystal clear about... It's not, you know, I, people say, oh, I want to see it running on a phone. I want to, you know, this and that. So let me, let me pull up my Twit app uh, right here on my phone. I'll hold up the screen. Is, so I'm, I'm running the app. I've got it. Uh, and it's running. Ooh, There's Twit. Sweet. Right? Hold on. But I'm going to do you one better, Leo. This is, this will blow you away. Hold on a second here. <laughs> hold on a second. Pull this up. It take me a second here because I'm, I'm in the, not the Faraday cage, but it might as well be. Uh, <laughs> nice. You actually look like you're in the uh, in the cell block 19 where they interrogate the de bad developers. Okay, right, so this go. is last week's episode. Oh, awesome! Streaming live. Oh, awesome! Phone this way, it'll come up. Oh, that's fantastic, Paul! You got to be How happy about cool that. How cool is that? Yep. Look at yep. that. I do have this right. app too, I'm by the way. It. I know Dimitri, and I should say uh, hello to him and thank you. We're thank very you grateful, this. Dimitri, for doing this. This is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is this is a one guy. It's a it's in beta now. He got me the beta's app last night. I, this is a this is a week old build, but he got me the beta app last night. It's one guy. He said it's a labor of love. This it, you know these are the developers we got to reach. A guy yes. who wants to get noticed for his work. Yes. Uh, doesn't want to build a sales force. Doesn't need to hire a bunch of people. He you know give people great tools and they'll do amazing things. The the thing I say internally is we kind of hit our Gutenberg moment with regard to app development, right? Everybody can be a developer now. The tools are, in fact, that easy. The languages are, in fact, that approachable. And so if you give people the opportunity to, to create, guess what? But they're going to create. Look what happened. You guys talk about digital cameras all the time, right? I mean, my dad spent tens of thousands of dollars in hardware for taking photos. He had a dark room and all that. It was it was a labor of love and not something I could get into. But now you can buy a, a 50 billion megapixel camera at, at Costco for $100, right? And now we're drinking. Browning in pictures of cats and, and kids. Right. But if you give people cheap tools that allows them to explore their creative side, guess what? They're going to do it. And so that's why we're so excited about the phone as a platform for, for people to just explore their creativity. And, you know, for Leo, this becomes, you know, for you, a personal branding application, right? It's I mean, really how, just a great, uh, great way to connect with your customers. And, and quite honestly, it's one guy did this for you in his spare time. Right. Right. With not even, he doesn't even have a phone. <laughs> and he built this all in the emulator. It's all in the so emulator. It's just, wow. It's, it's it's amazing what he's been able to do. Well, so, and you said you know, an important ask. word, and something that Microsoft's always been uh, very good at is platform. 
And uh, in fact, yep. really, that was the secret to Microsoft's success was they built a platform. And yep, right. uh, it was a platform that welcomed developers, embraced developers, developers embraced in return. And as a result, uh, they completely dominated the marketplace. And as, we, as we're starting to see, that's, that is now what's becoming important on a phone. Uh, obviously, well, you have to support the phone. But if it's a platform people can develop for, uh, that is so important. That's the ecosystem. It's, it's developers care about two things. Uh, you know, they obviously want to work on important stuff that's important to them, but they, they care about uh, one of two things or a combination of both, either making money or getting non-pecuniary gains, right. recognition for their work, right? right? And so we did a really good job of, of satisfying both of those things in the Windows 3.1 timeframe, right? I mean, we were notorious for this. We, we brought customers into sales calls. We had shows. We, you know, we promoted the heck out of our developers and we, and people made a ton of money, right? And they still do developers for windows. I mean, make tons and tons of money for the, for the windows ecosystem. Right. Um, when the web came along and people stopped wanting to make money for whatever reason, the web, the whole thing was just, you know, let's, let's get everything web. free. <laughs> right. Well, but, but it changed, it changed that vector, right? So it, it was no longer about making money. It was about getting recognition for your work or really controlling the eyeballs. And so who did that really well? Google. Right. Right. And so they became the, the controlling gateway for getting apps, web apps noticed. Right. Uh, and so then the iPhone comes along and then you get this app economy on mobile. Right. And they, they take off. And that's great. Now, of course, Android and Windows Phone 7. Uh, but people want to make money. I mean, it, you know, for all the talk about open web, the reality is you can build web apps for iPhone or you can take a language that I find it challenging. Obviously, people have been very successful, but I, I find Objective C challenging. That's my own personal failing. But, you know, of course, I'm a marketing guy. So who am I to say? But, uh, Objective-C is difficult for some people. It's obscure. It's not used anywhere else. You can't really take it to any other platform. Uh, you can't take the app anywhere else. And yet, given the decision between that and mobile app or web apps, what do people choose on the iPhone? Objective-C. Why? Because they can make money. So, you know, the app economy has really been a, a very different shift in what we've seen for the last 10 years on, on the web. And it's it's been pretty impressive how explosive the growth has been in terms of people uh, accepting it and, and moving into it as a, I want to be a developer. I want to be an experienced creator. Well, if, if you make it easy, I mean, everybody wants to develop for this. Even my CEO, Lisa, is going to go take an app development class, you know, <laughs> and uh, well, of course, it, what, go ahead. We got lots of training for them. I mean, we got uh, 12 hours of training that we've got up at Channel 9 right now to get you started. And we got uh, another six hours we'll be posting next week. So we've got, we're, we're really pushing out as much uh, training as we can get for everyone who wants to get on board because we you know we want everyone building apps. Is it C Sharp you uh, you developing? Is it is that what you're developing in? Uh, today it's C Sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously it's .net is based on a common language runtime. So at at some point in the near future we will have support for, you know, Visual Basic. That makes sense. Uh, the DLR which is our dynamic language runtime, so that brings in F Sharp and Iron Ruby and Iron Python. I mean, we, we will have the ability to oh, do that in great. the future, but oh, that's a high order bit is Visual Basic. Right. right? That's what everyone else Visual does, Basic. So. Right. Next, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the one everybody wants, sure, because everybody can write yep. Visual Basic. That's very simple. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, and, and and then the chat room explodes with cries of how unfair. Uh, well, but should they? <laughs> 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 no, I mean, I love it. Look, at, I, I love Visual Basic. Uh, yeah. It's and uh, I think there are probably you know a hundred million people in the world who can write in Visual Basic. I don't know what the numbers actually are, but it's it's a huge number. It is a huge number, and and it's. We want to unleash the hordes and, right. and let them go. Can you create um, amazing can you talk at all to any of the cross-platform stuff? I know Microsoft's talked up a little bit about, especially on the game side. You know the ability to, um, you know, write a program and easily port over parts of it. You know, so that you might have a game or a similar game to run across different platforms or. Uh, sure. So, or, or so how that might work on the upside. Well, so there's two things there, right? So you've got. Uh, with XNA, uh, because that's what we use to build, if you're building Xbox Live arcade games, um, mm -hmm. the amount of work required to take an Xbox Live arcade game and port it to phone is is quite honestly de minimis, uh, because it all uses the XNA studio as, as the base. Um, and so we had a, a developer who built a game for Xbox Live, and they wanted to show it on a phone at PAX, which was a, was it last weekend or two weekends ago, uh, here in Seattle. Uh, and they have a, a uncle or somebody who works in the phone group and said, hey, what do I need to do? And he said, well, go get the tools and, and see what happens. And in two, you know, a day and a half, they had their app running on a phone and they were able to show it at PAX uh, running on a phone. Right. So right. 
that's pretty cool, right? So you can take your phone, you can take a game built for Xbox Live and port it to a phone really easily. Or uh, you could do what, say, uh, the Xbox team is doing with uh, my personal favorite. I cannot wait to get this app. It is so cool, this game. It's called Project Sunburst. They demoed it uh, at this is uh, the Crackdown thing? Gamescom. Crackdown. Oh, my God. Yeah, Have you seen yeah, this yeah, game? Yeah. It looks I mean, awesome. This I'm, is the big I'm, maps thing right there. Yeah. It's so yeah, take yeah. field runners where it's not a 2D sprite-based field. It's a map and the map is the playing service and because we have all the data about well this is a road and this is a building the zombies and the trucks and everything only walk on the street or on the sidewalk or through parking lots but they don't go through buildings and so you set up your your gun to be a real place that's the buildings. point right in other words yeah. it could be your yeah. neighborhood so you can defend your, your house yeah, yeah. actual it's places amazing. oh my yeah. god that's yeah. hysterical that is just awesome well, so, yeah so the demo they show is is defending the microsoft campus from the uh, <laughs> i can't wait that looks awesome <laughs> so, that sounds great but but as a companion app to crack down, so, even as you travel, because because you, you're defending different parts of your city, uh, the more you travel with the game, and, and you're based, you're not checking in in like a Gowala or Foursquare sense. But <laughs> this is a great idea. I really like this. As idea. you time, okay, you traveled this far, you unlocked something new in the game because you went some some amount of distance. So it's really cool. So companion apps and then ports. You can do either one, and, and it's you know there's gonna be a lot of both. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I, um, I bet I can't you are. Wait to see I, can't, some of this I stuff. can't wait. I can't wait either. So tell me, uh, uh, is it, there, there is no third party way to install apps? You 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 have to be in the marketplace. Is that correct? Uh, you do have to be. Oh, you got the sunburst up. That's awesome. Yeah, it's I just want to show people. To this um, is the yeah, YouTube you to, video. What? You do have to yeah, go through that. Wait, and the, and there is do. an approval it's, process, uh, but again, as you said, much much simpler and uh, much more clear what the approval process is. It's it's much clearer. That's right, and and we're very uh, very open about what what's required of you and, and what we expect and, of a developer. And does, the if, if you make a paid app, Microsoft handles the transaction. That's right. Seventy thirty split. We we do all the transactions, and we'll have uh, billing through the system or mobile operators. So it's both. Ah, excellent. And uh, as you yeah, mentioned, it it of course, you have a built-in uh, Microsoft ad platform that people can choose to use if they wish. Well, that's right. So, I mean, you know, a developer may want to just do free apps. Hey, that's cool. You might want to try and charge for apps. Hey, that's cool. Or you may uh, want to try and advertise, uh, monetize through advertising. Do whatever you want. We, we want to give you choices and be prescriptive in our guidance and not give you a million choices, right? That's why we don't have uh, purple buttons on green backgrounds. We do have a design language, for example, for, for the phone. But we want to give you choices to do what you want to do and, and go forth and, you know, be awesome. In -app, kind of our, in -app, our motto. In app purchases? Uh, absolutely. Uh, really? We support in-app purchases. Yeah, absolutely. That's so fantastic. If, if you say you're, I don't know, a large bookseller that exists in Seattle and you want to have an application <laughs> that, that, that doesn't, you know, doesn't, yes. you know they want to they collect all the revenues, right? And so they have their own billing platform. Sure. Why, why would we stop them from billing customers for buying stuff in-app purchase? So they can do it themselves or we will have then uh, down the road, we'll have our own service to do it. But we don't prohibit anybody from doing in-app purchases. What about the uh, the trial mode stuff? Can you talk about that just a bit? You know, trial mode's very interesting. It's something we haven't talked a ton about, and it, it really is a very powerful feature. I mean, as a developer, you basically set a function at the front, and it, it checks to see if the if the app is in trial mode or not. And so when people think trial, they go, okay, well, it's just reduced functionality. But really, trial mode can be, it's a flip the bit, right? It's it's ads or no ads. It's uh, levels one through five or levels one through ten. It's, it's any way that you want to take your app from, you know, A to B in whatever form that is. Um, and it's, it's supported at the platform level and, and you can just update in the marketplace what the conditions are for, for the trial. And, and, uh, and when it loads, it checks and if it fails, it's, it's in trial mode. And if it, if it passes, it's, it's, you know, you have full app access. So, uh, we built that into the platform. We felt it was pretty important for developers to have, uh, to have that functionality. And is that something, uh, how does it work in the sense that, is it something that it's, it's available to everyone, I guess, is it a requirement? Uh, that they use it no, or no. no this no. is just an option no. that they have yeah i mean yeah. It, it, again to make the requirement would be I don't know, a little bit I, that feels like an unnatural act i'd rather uh <laughs> give, give a developer yeah. the opportunity to, yeah give, we'll give a developer to do what they want to do and and give them proper mm -hmm. guide rails and and uh and get out of the way i mean it's kind of like hiring right hire smart people support them and get out of the way and uh once you start trying to control them too much it's uh yeah you, you don't see great things happen when you do that you do benefit, I have to say, you benefit a little bit from being a little late to the game because you can see what's worked and what hasn't worked on other <laughs> platforms, and you can say, well, I won't do that. Sure. Uh, and sure. Um, uh, and I, I have to say, just looking at this, I'm, an, I'm a 
pretty devout Android uh, user, and I like the big screens. But you got just your look, Nexus One. I know all about your Nexus yeah, One. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm using the Droid X right now because I like the four-inch screen. But but looking at it, what it looks like is an Android that kind of works. You know, it's like without, without some of the the little. We're gonna get you yet, Leo. <laughs> well, I'm very interested. Now, you haven't made announcements yet about who's gonna carry it and and, and all that. Have we've you? made some. I mean, we we announced that AT&T is gonna, a carrier in the U.S. and and we've talked about a little bit about the carriers, but that's not. I'm, we're not announcing that today. Hearing Verizon so, not till next year is that? Is that what you're hearing? Okay. That's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. You know what I heard? Just I heard I had a date for yes. until leave. But it's just it's just what I hear. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I can't. I'm not going to comment. You can't, can't comment on. Yeah, I understand. Carriers, yeah, I get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I don't blame you. How about uh, outside the U.S.? Uh, you know what? I'm not. I, I know that we. Am I allowed to talk about carriers outside the U.S.? Uh, I'm going to opt for no. Let yeah, me, don't, yeah, don't, don't get in trouble. Side. I actually got a Microsoft uh, person in trouble at the uh, at E3, and I don't want to do that again. Don't, so. don't do that. Let me, <laughs> let me err on the side of no. Uh, but yeah. we obviously have carriers, all, you know, worldwide carriers, it's, big, it's, big markets. It's Bloomberg, it's, it's who said, it's Bloomberg who said today that Verizon Wireless will not sell Microsoft Windows 7 phones at start. This is, you know, I don't know. Uh, this is coming from um, Brenda Rain. some smart reporters at Bloomberg. That's yeah. a... Something, something. I, I, I can't can't comment. Can't comment. That's, that's, quite, that's quite a headline, though, from Bloomberg. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, but who knows? You may know better. Who knows? He, he, <laughs> he may. He I, may I know, know nothing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Paul. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look, Call of actually, Duty. <laughs> that was accurate and painful. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh dear! I'm excited. I I, I have to say, um, you know, I've I've always been uh, a supporter of of competition, of choice, uh, and yep. uh, and it's nice to have. I use the iPhone for the first three years. It's nice to have a choice now, and and it looks like we're going to have a, a a good solid third platform, maybe fourth if you include BlackBerry out there, and that's that's pretty exciting. Uh, it is exciting, and I, you know it's. I, I look at uh, obviously the opportunity for mobile worldwide is huge, but but you know if if we're even half as successful, or even I mean if we're as successful as the Windows Seven guys were in kind of regaining the mojo for the operating system, it feels that's, like that's that. really they set the they set the bar. I mean, if you think about what the Windows Seven guys do, yeah. wow, it like, feels just like that. Up, I have to say, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got a lot of really smart people here working, killing themselves to get this product to market and do an amazing job. And we, we really hope that the product speaks for itself uh, and that, you know, for what I'm responsible for, the dev platform, that developers really feel like that they can, whatever they can dream, they can build. It's easy. It's approachable. They feel like they can talk to somebody at the company and get straight answers about what they need to do. Uh, and just making sure that people feel like they can do what they want and be happy about it and just feel excited about what they can build. And that's just, it's that excitement. I just, I, it, that's what pumps me up. I get really, you know, just, I'm the guy running up and down the halls trying to get everybody pumped up. <laughs> <laughs> that must be fun. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, well, it is when you got free stuff to give away. We just got the shirts, uh, the developer shirts that we're getting for the Ooh. special, like I'm a developer for Windows Phone 7 shirts. That's they cool. are, uh, they're cool. I wore it last night at the uh, the event we had here on campus for the local press to talk about the the tools release. And it's uh, Gut when Guthrie says he would wear it, uh, and Scott Guthrie is our VP of uh, DevDiv. When he says uh, he'll wear it instead of a red polo, you know you got to wear it. Uh, <laughs> right. And and uh, yeah. I know you're not going to say, that, but what's when is this going to come out? Uh, once wow. the, sh the shirt will come out, I'll have no, the, the phone. No, no, Brandon. Do you have a date? What phone? What Are phone? We talking about phones here? What phone? Wow. <laughs> that's a good I'm answer. I'm actually most curious about the one you you said that you've picked out your favorite. Ooh, that's I what I want to know. Yeah. And I know, I realize yeah. it's not uh, political for you to say what that is, but yeah. if you could shoot no, me an I email, I'd say. really like to. I'd like to know uh, myself. I, I can't. I can't say. I I will be. It, there'll be plenty of pictures up on my blog when I get it. Although there is one that some that. A few executives have that I haven't seen yet, which I hear is just off the chain awesome. So mm. I, I, of the ones I've seen, which is most of them, uh, I have my favorite picked out. But if this one is as awesome as everyone says, and I will, you know, I will wait to see it. Can, can, can you say who's that, making the these? Who's, now, we know Samsung, uh, LG. Samsung, uh, LG, uh, HTC. Else? HTC. Dell. Dell. Yeah, Dell. Uh, lots of guys making phones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very, very cool phones. Lots of, lots of great design. I'm, I'm, I have lots to say design. my money's, I'm, I'm an HTC fan. I'm wondering, uh, I'd like to see what the HTC folks uh, do with this. And I, and you know, I my, say this as six... somebody who hasn't owned a Windows mobile phone since the Motorola Q. Uh, 
Yikes. So, wow. you, you, you know, you're... Wow. <laughs> I, had, I had one of those. Yes, yeah, so did I. <laughs> I, had a, I, had the, uh, HT, I had the HD2, uh, and I gave that to my wife when I, when I joined the team. And my dog mad at her for some reason? The, no, it wasn't a bad phone. <laughs> That's a good phone. It's, it's, a bad phone. It's, my only trouble with the HD2 is my, my hand. I, I have carny hands, like really tiny hands. And so, uh, I, you know, get my thumb across the corner didn't quite work uh, for me. So I was constantly shifting the phone in my hand. And let me ask you a question on behalf of uh, we beleaguered Mac owners. Will there be any Mac compatibility at all? Will there be any way to use this if I'm using a Mac? There'll be any Mac compatibility, meaning will the Zoom PC software exist well, on the Mac? Well, we know the Zoom no. software does not exist on the Mac. And, and, probably and so that's how you get the Zoom experience. And that's how you get movies. Can I use uh, the phone and, and, without it? Uh, can you use the phone without Zoom? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, for a while, I didn't even I, I, I didn't know I was supposed to plug it into you know my computer. <laughs> and, uh, oops. So I, I mean, I've been using this phone as my primary phone for a, a little over two months, maybe three months now, mm -hmm. a long time. Uh, and uh, and I just hadn't synced it because I have a Zoom HD that I that's what I do all my podcasts, listening to right. and music and whatnot on. And so that's that's just that that's where my brain was, where it's where I keep all my portable content. Uh, but now I use my phone for for the Zoom experience. And so yeah, you, you can do over the air syncing, which is nice, the wireless, which is great. Uh, but then you got to plug it in for the for uh, videos to get across the wire because I want to do that over the air. So as long as I don't want to do videos or get songs out of my Zoom marketplace or Zoom Pass, I'm okay. No, you can actually do Zoom Pass streaming to the phone. Oh, okay. You, you don't need to be. Oh, oh yeah, okay. no, it's great. If you go into the marketplace. Uh, on the phone, you can actually go in and download music straight from Zoom, and you can stream straight from Zoom Marketplace if you have uh, Zoom Pass. Now, it's, it's awesome. And I know this isn't your bailiwick exactly, but I'm going to ask you anyway because uh, Paul won't <laughs> tell me a thing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, a most, huh? Huh? I'm mostly a Google, a Google user. Will I be able to do as I do with most other phones now, log into my Google account and get contacts transferred over and all that stuff? Uh, contacts, I don't know because I don't keep contacts in Google. I do have a Gmail account. Uh, and that works okay. on the phone. Presumably, if it's uh, a sports I, exchange, it yeah. will work. That, yeah, yeah, so I don't, yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I know that. It, Paul, know, do you know? And it's just a like, like, Yeah, it does work. You know. Okay, it does. Okay. It, it does um, exchange Active Sync for, yeah. and it does Google natively as well for yeah. uh, contacts, sure. email, and calendar. Good. So I don't really care if it hooks up to the Mac. Then I, I just I log into my my uh, my Google accounts, and I get everything I need. Hey, who cares? Who cares about that silly Mac thing? That you know? Mac. Who needs? <laughs> it? Do they still make those? It's, you know, it's a very specialized market, Paul. <laughs> right. right. It's and like those chairs that go upstairs. <laughs> those are cool. Some, some hey, people need them. I'm not going to knock those chairs that go upstairs. <laughs> That's pretty cool. You blow up a few more balls that you're sitting on. And maybe I might need, need one of those. I might need one of those. Right. Uh, hey, I really appreciate uh, your time, Brandon. This is very exciting. I know you're busy right now because today was launch day for the. Uh, Thank you for RTM. having me. This is this is a treat yeah, for me. For I don't me. know. I don't know what you got out of it, but for me, I'm I'm excited to be here. Well, uh, I, 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 I'll tell you what I got out of it. I kind of got a little lust for a for a uh, Windows Phone Seven phone. Apparently, I haven't been pushing it hard enough. No, you haven't, Paul. You're such. You're so. You know, you Paul is Paul plays it cool. He's so cool. He does play yeah, cool. It's, it's okay. It's, it's funny. His, he's he's you know he's appropriately uh, a lover and a hater, right? I mean, we definitely love when Paul uh, when he vents a little bit uh, because he's being honest and it, it makes it genuine. Uh, so it's uh, it's okay. He, he he pushes, but he also lets us know where we're where we're messing up. Hey, Brandon, can I usually, can we can we take uh, some requests from the uh, chat room for developers we'd like you to talk to? Uh, developers we'd like developer. you to talk to. People, we'd like you to say, "Come on, write for the platform. Write for the platform." For instance, oh, sure, Dropbox. Absolutely. We would love Dropbox. Yes. Okay. Of course, Dropbox is a great service. Angry Birds. Yes. They're so angry. Why are they so angry? Why are they so angry? They, someone stole so their so eggs. Bad. Don't you? <laughs> it's understandable I, why they're angry. Um, so you I, just want to help the birds. Game, I, I was at a baseball game a couple weeks ago, and the, the guy that runs Silver Lake, Brian Goldfarb, he says to me. Now I'm playing Angry Birds. Ah, I finished Angry Birds, you know, a while ago. And he says, no, no, there's new levels. I, I don't like Brian anymore. <laughs> Son of a gun! I was wasting my time with Field Runners, and that's... that's field that's Runners. Another. Field Runners would be another you know, good one. If I understood how the scoring worked in Field Runners, I got a perfect... No one got through, and somehow I scored lower than my all-time high, oh, and that was the first time I'd ever done perfect. That's very so scoring, I don't understand. So when I we flew home from Europe, uh, my, my kids bonded with three... Teenagers around them over Angry Birds. Oh yeah, you know, we all. I, <laughs> said, I made a crack about Angry Birds to my son, and the people in front of him heard me, turned around and said, "Oh, you guys play Angry Birds?" And they 
They <laughs> talked for hours on this flight. <laughs> See? You know, comparing you know, notes and bringing you know people mainstream. together. Well, you know, it just hit mainstream. We had uh, someone was uh, talking about an exchange server problem, and somebody sent around a picture of one of the angry birds hitting <laughs> the exchange server. <laughs> so it's like, you know, this is what this, you need to fix your, your mail server. And we're like, okay. Right. I, but, I, yeah, I, yeah, the angry birds guys are, they've we, got a good product. We it's, rule. I'm sure uh, the, the folks at NG Moco would be a great uh, company sure. to have on board in, in your developer a group. Yep. Um, there was another one. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the chat room, all the things that they say uh, they would like. Plants any, any versus zombies. Villains, I'm, sure. I'm sure Pat, you know, PopCap oh, develops for Windows. I'm sure they would love to get yeah, all their do. stuff Plants, on there. Plants versus zombies is another one of those games that uh, once you discover that the watermelons are the most outsized competitive <laughs> advantage in that game, <laughs> it just stops being fun. They're like the, ro they're like the rocket launcher in one of those. Uh, yeah, shows. Right. <laughs> you put if you put the garlics in the corner and just three watermelons, it's not even fair. But then the the flaming barrel with the with the double shooters, it's over, right? I mean, there's just it's just it's you know yeah. I, I'm waiting for Plants versus zombies too. Talking about the wrong stuff so far. Yeah, that's all I make it. All right, all right. Productivity, productivity. I presume there'll be a remote desktop solution for Windows Seven of some kind. <laughs> I think I heard a cricket. <laughs> I, uh, I was oh, Windows Live. Anything? Yeah. yeah. No, we don't have remote desktop at launch. It's it's uh you know again consumer phone that you take to work. Right. Got it. That's the starting point. Got and it. so that stuff will come, and the enterprise features will come over time for sure. Uh, but uh, but that's not a launch feature, no. And things like tethering, that's going to be a decision that the carriers will make, right? It's up to the carriers. Okay, but it, I presume it's a capability that you could have in the phone. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If, if they wanted absolutely. to enable it, yeah. They want to enable it. Right. Got to have your got to have your happy carrier partners <laughs> and your happy handset partners. <laughs> really great to talk to you, Brandon. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a. Uh, Fantastic to talk to somebody who is uh, who's as excited about what he's doing as you are, and um, uh, and you're it's, it's such you know, a welcome I, relief from that Therod guy. He is so bored with what he's doing, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, I just got a Windows phone book. I don't really care. <laughs> I hate yeah, life. And, <laughs> and you had quite Paul. I remember when we spoke at TechEd, and you were yeah. you were under the wire. I mean, it's, this is a oh, guy yeah. who works hard. I was dying. Hard. Now he, he does. Clear. He so, works hard, but uh, but don't kid yourself, Brandon. He plays hard. It's true. Well, he does. Call of Duty. He's got the setup upstairs and downstairs. He's got a son to play. My kids aren't old enough to play Call of Duty, oh, yeah. so he's got the advantage there. Will be. He's got uh, an Xbox in every room. So well, I just don't. Me, I don't want to ever have to not play Call of Duty. <laughs> don't worry, you don't, and you won't. <laughs> you know, I told you before. Uh, life is just the downtime between games of Call like of Duty. That. <laughs> Thank or, you, Brandon. Or, or when you're lucky enough to have a job like this, you get. I, I, you know, Leo, you're right. It's a great job. It's. It, I, I'm loving it. This is the coolest thing I've ever worked on, and and I I ran my own company for a while, and, and that was I thought cool. But this is this has been a great experience and a lot of fun people to work with. But it's it's gonna be even better when I get starting to talk to people who have shipped their apps and are you know yeah. having customers yeah. use their apps, and that's gonna be even better. That's like the payoff for me. Well, I can't wait for the app stuff to happen. This has been my one thing with the phone. I I check that Xbox Live thing in the App Store every day, you know, uh, knowing <laughs> that nothing's gonna happen. But please. Yeah. You know, something, soon. anything. <laughs> soon, <laughs> you know? soon, soon, soon. I've played some of the games. You're going to be very excited. No, very, I can't very wait. excited. And the, and the Avatar app is really cool as well. The Avatar right, app is really the, really uh, the Avatar editing, app. yeah. Well, it's editing and it's got like a leveler. And so you tip the phone and you get the level. But then the guy kind of... Oh, he actually kind of tilts over and stuff. Side. That's great. And, and <laughs> there's, a, and, you know, there, there's a flashlight app with a flashlight option. And the guy pulls out a flashlight and he's kind of poking it around. And that's cool. And I mean, you, it's just... It, it's the smile moment, so that's what you call yep. it, right? I mean, yep. that's it's gonna be very cool. Oh, you guys are nuts. So, Leo, the, the, the most important app's gonna be that Twit app, dude. That, that <laughs> yeah, Twit that's... app's gonna be hot. It's gonna be awesome. How cool is that? It is really hey, Leo, cool. Seriously, give, give me your honest assessment. How cool is that? It app? is you so see that? cool. With yes. No hand in it. Doesn't it make you smile? It's beautiful. I love the background. I love what he did. I love. Uh, it's a really good use of Metro. I think. Uh, yeah. Really, it's really beautiful. gorgeous. So, Dimitri, yeah. thank you, and uh, Brandon, thank you, and uh, I hope we'll talk again soon. Anytime you want me on, I'm happy to come chat. Great. And uh, cool. thanks, Brandon. When thanks, the new phone comes out, give your wife something a little better than that. Okay? <laughs> yes. Really? Really? <laughs> Wait, that is top of the list. She's very angry. She <laughs> Take care, Brandon. No end of story. Thanks, guys. <laughs> bye bye. Great guy to have on. I think it, it, yeah. very timely uh, to, to have uh, Brandon Watson uh, on. He is the developer uh, relations at uh, Windows Phone. You can uh, reach the Windows Phone site, developer.windowsphone.com, 
And mm -hmm. uh, they just RTM'd the tools. So if you're a developer or you're interested in learning development, uh, you can get them for free right now. It'll be a good time to jump on a new platform, I think. Yeah, if you have the, you know, the beta, the previous release uh, of the tools, you have to uninstall that. And in fact, that's what I was doing just before we started recording because I haven't uh, put the, the new version on yet. I'm, I'm interested to see how this uh, panorama control especially works. Yeah, I mean, having controls like that uh, that makes it so easy to do the UI is very, mm -hmm. very important, I think. Yeah, the tools are fantastic. Yeah. Um, do you want to, there's a few other stories we can talk about. I mean, this, is, uh, yeah. this yeah, isn't the go. only thing going on in the... It's the only important thing, but we should we should cover the. Other I have stuff. to say, Paul, I, 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 you 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 kind of undersold this. I'm pr I'm pretty excited about this. <laughs> you know, Leo, you don't want to be that guy. Yeah, I that, know. You know, comes out oh, too oh, strong. Here comes Paul again talking about you Windows know. Phone, Windows Phone. But so, Windows Phone is uh, is going to be a huge focus for me going forward. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And and I'm really, I am excited. But you have to remember, you know, uh, when the Windows the Windows Seven book came out last year. As I do so often, I say, oh, I'm never going to do this again. You know, the publisher really wanted me to get going on something else. And I, I put them off and put them off and put them off. And then uh, February came around and Microsoft made this announcement and I watched it and I called them up and I said, this is it. I got to write this book. And I just I just saw this as my opportunity to force myself to really get to know the right. system in a deep way because you can play around with stuff. But. You know, you can't really invent reasons to dive in and, and really spend the time that's necessary, to, um, you know, to really figure something out. And doing the book really helped me do that. So, um, well, I also have to say that um, uh, this is where all the action is, frankly, in our business. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's in these portable platforms. Yep. So if no, you, this, if you want to stay nice, germane, right. if you want to stay relevant in the technology yeah. journalism uh, field, you better darn well be covering mobile. Yeah, actually, so this is kind of a weird uh, coincidence uh, as you guys were talking about, you you were talking about your Droid X. Um, <laughs> you know, I, actually, I work for a company now, and, and the company that I work for has their own IT department, and, and it's a huge corporation and all that stuff. And they're trying to, I, I've, I've been self-employed for so long, hmm. I don't know, and I work from home anyway, so I'm not there. I don't go to meetings every week or whatever, but, you know, there are some integration bits that, you know, they're eager to get me going on. So uh, they've been bugging me. You know, we want we want to send you a laptop that has the VPN software. You can access our internal stuff and all that. And like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're going to send me a phone. And so I said, well, why don't you just wait until, you know, October, November, I can get a Windows phone. And no, no, we got to send you a phone. So actually, they're, <laughs> they're sending me a Droid. And I thought to myself, you know, a Droid X. Well, you're going to like it. I don't need this thing, and I don't really You're want it. Like but it. On, Play with but it a little bit. I, right. I think it's important. Uh, the reason I, I finally said okay was, you know, I have iPhones. I've had, I've had every iPhone uh, until the iPhone 4. I have the new iPod Touch and all that. Um, I think this is going to be a good way for me to keep up on this stuff, and I think that's important for all the same reasons. It's always been important. The reasons I've followed along with Linux and Mac OS X in the past and the desktop, um, you know, I need to – my wife has a Droid, but I don't – I don't grab it every day and look at it and see how the updates are doing and all that stuff. And I think this will be an important way for me to be able to speak more responsibly about the differences between the major platforms and where one is better and where one is worse and all that. So um, I'm not switching to Android or anything, but I guess I'm getting an Android phone whether I want it or not. So, But that's um, it was interesting that he said that's what people want. They don't want work to give them a uh, a phone. They want to get their own phone and bring it to work. Well, right. And, you know, I just wrote about this. This this is actually, I think, one of the biggest mistakes that American businesses in particular are making the, uh, right now is the uh, granting this to people. Because from the perspective of a corporation, if, if their employees decide to spend hundreds of dollars on a phone and then up to $100 or $120 a month for that data plan and all the other stuff they got on the phone, and that's a cost that the company doesn't have to absorb, you can add that up and say, look, we're saving thousands of dollars over, you know, two or three years. And they look at that as some kind of a cost advantage. But if they're not managing those phones, the ability of that phone to give away your corporate data is great. Oh, yeah. Unless you're doing the right thing policy-wise, oh, yeah. exchange and all that kind of stuff. And I think the hidden cost of this uh, is going to bite a lot of companies badly. And I think we're going to hear some very famous and high-profile stories in the days ahead of, 
you know, a Procter and Gamble or a Coke or one of the real, one of the really big non-technology companies who get, gave up the keys to the kingdom by allowing these consumer phones into the workplace. Now, uh, one of the reasons I can get a Droid X, by the way, is that uh, you don't know anything. Stock. You have no, well, no you have no, 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 no knowledge of anything. So no, no, uh, they have exchange. You know, as the for the email and they have policies. And one of the things that I, I guess happened in the latest version of the software update is that they enabled a bunch of the uh, policies that are needed for protecting the phones from theft. You know, remote wipe and all that right, stuff. Right. And that's the baseline. But I think a lot of the companies out there aren't really thinking of that, you know, and it's it's bizarre to me. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a problem uh, going forward. But, yeah, you, this is this is very much the trend, you know, the consumerization of IT or whatever you right, want to call it. Right. Um, so, you know, the, this stuff will get better. Android and iPhone and obviously the Windows Phone stuff will all pick up this policy support, all the things that corporations, uh, need, you know, need. And hopefully we'll implement. And they're asking me in the chat room if uh, this phone is as good as it seems. Will you do a Windows Phone weekly? Oh, crap. <laughs> No, you don't have to because we're going to turn this into that. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm going to be cover. You know, like I said, I mean, in the future, not uh, in the next few weeks, but um, as Windows the Seven feature of the week goes away, eventually there'll be a Windows uh, Phone, you know, feature of the week and all that. We're going to be covering Windows Phone here a lot. So you're you're welcome to do a Windows Phone podcast, obviously. But my intention is to. You know, cover that as part of this. I mean, I think of you know yeah, Windows. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's where it is. Like I said, this is what the you know. I mean. This is what's exciting. It's what's happening in Windows. Yeah, and Windows isn't just the desktop thing. It's you know, Windows is up in the in the web and the cloud. It's also on right. the phone. So it's you know, Windows across the board. Windows everywhere, as we say. I almost you know thought well we could cover Android in this week in Google, but there's so much to cover. I think we're going to end up doing an Android show. Yeah. Well, who knows? Yeah. Let's see what happens with Windows Phone and where we don't do an Apple Phone show. We do you know Mac Break Weekly, and it covers a lot of the iPhone. We'll see. I th I think it's probably sufficient. Uh, and especially I think on since the you, Apple side, that's where everything is, right? What would you talk if you had a, if you had to restrict it to the Mac? Nothing's happening right now. You would have nothing to talk about. Nothing. nothing. I agree with you. Uh, I hope to be there someday. Yeah. Not on the side. Of we do do an iPad <laughs> show. All right, yeah, Halo Reach. Yeah. You've played it. You've completed the campaign already. <laughs> yeah, it's not that long. It's not like it's some huge achievement. In fact, I would have done it much more quickly, but I've been very busy this week. Um, I, I have to say. I've I've had kind of an up and down relationship with Halo. I, I was uh, coming at the from PC shooters and the the quakes and the dooms and all that stuff. I was never hu hugely impressed by Halo, uh, but I, I, the one thing I've always liked about Halo is the storyline. And the storyline in Halo Reach is fantastic. It's a prequel to the other games. There's a lot of origin story stuff in there, which is awesome if you've been following along. Graphically, it's incredibly. Uh, it's just so much better than the other games and really that's been yeah, oh, so it's not the been, same old halo engine it looks a lot like the you know it's very clearly part of the same family of you right. know games it the there's a weird kind of a softness almost like a plastic quality to a lot of the things that are supposed to be metal that has always been sort of a halo trademark and that's there but the quality of the graphics is so much better than it's ever been the presentation has always been excellent uh the halo games have always been epic experiences, uh, you know, the single-player games. It is very, very impressive. I still think that Call of Duty is a much better experience for multiplayer in particular, but obviously uh, millions and millions of people play Halo every single day. In fact, as recently as last month, uh, the, the previous Halo game, which came out years ago, was the number three played game online. You know, so clearly uh, Halo has you know, uh, scratched an itch somewhere for many, many people. So um, this is the best one yet. There's no doubt about it. Halo Reach is fantastic. It's it's impressive. And I have I have a tip for Halo fans. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, this won't be much of a tip for Halo fans, but a, a tip for other people. One of the things the Halo, the Bungie guys, you know, the guys who uh, create the game have always done with the mainstream Halo games is there's always one of those one more thing moments in the game. So when you complete the game, and the credits roll, don't uh, yeah. turn off the console. Let him go. Because him there's go. always something that happens afterwards. Uh, and do, it's they sort have, of uh, do they have like um, bloopers, stuff like that? No, they're not bloopers, but it's it's a finalization <laughs> of the story. The, 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 well, I, Red versus I blue. I say that because there's, there's no silliness in Halo. No, okay, no. Although, actually, this game has a lot more personality than the other games. So there is 
There is actually one funny moment in the game where uh, this is when the aliens first attack uh, humanity, and they're, they're, they are going to destroy this planet. I mean, it's, it's well known in the, the Halo history that this planet is just wiped out. And you're in, a, you're in a skyscraper going up to the top and in one of those elevators that looks outside. So it's death and destruction and laser beams and aliens everywhere. And you step into the elevator and the door close and Muzak plays. And you can't hear anything else but the Muzak as you go up. And it's like this peppy little da, song. Da, 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 yeah, it's just, da, 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 yeah, let's da, 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 one of like, da, 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 can you find the way to San Jose? You know, all these big guns and, and you're it, waiting. Right. And then, and then the door opens, and the sound goes away, and then the, the, the mayhem turns. There, there's, there is that little kind of That's moment. That's cute. Of, yeah. But anyway, uh, as has always been the case with all the Halo games, um, stick around. So when the game ends, don't walk away. Don't turn it off. Let the credits roll. And in, the, and in this case, is actually a bit you actually play for a little bit more. It's kind of interesting the way they do it. So it finalizes the story, and it's absolutely worth checking out. It's really neat. Very exciting. Um, Microsoft and Russia, don't skip over that. Microsoft and Russia, sitting in a tree, says Paul. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. I assume Is this you the, heard of this the source story. code, the source code thing? No, 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 no. Um, I, Microsoft gave, didn't they give the Soviet, not the Soviet Union, no, Russia. Didn't they give Russia source code to the office uh, stuff a couple, maybe it was I, last year. I don't know what you're talking about. Now what about. are they up to? Now you're just mixing up words. Now what are those knuckleheads up to? <laughs> you didn't hear this? You're kidding. Oh, I don't follow tech news, really. Interesting. So, <laughs> Leo, let me tell you something about tech news. But if you want to ask me about We Rule, I will tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, I don't. So, okay. <laughs> with, uh, no, there was a, the New York Times made the allegation this week that Russia, uh, that Microsoft has been implicitly and in some cases explicitly helping Russia crack down on dissidents. Dissidents being non-government organizations that don't agree with what the government is doing. In, the, in this country, they're just called people. But when you uh, live in an authoritative regime, as is the case somewhat in Russia, as is the case in places like China, uh, various places in South America, wherever, um, you know, Russia has actually used Microsoft as an excuse to crack down on these groups. The you can't steal is, it. Bill Gates will be upset. Well, in other words, some organization will be holding a rally on Sunday, and then mysteriously on Saturday night, the Russian government breaks into their offices because they heard that they were pirating Microsoft software. Oh. We're going to have to use all your computers and make sure that's Con not the case. Convenient, comrade. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny you should talk about that story because I happen to have in my hand yes. Russian farmer vegetable pie. Look at this. You know, I never know where you're going to go. <laughs> I bet you didn't guess that. Nope. That is Russia, Russian farm vegetable pie. What's in that pie? Cabbage. Cabbage. Broccoli. Broccoli. And, uh, and Shiraz? So, uh, <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, it's uh, not Russian valley pie, is no, it? No, Russian ve vegetable. He's, uh. he's got all, ro all root vegetable in. He's very good for you. And your bowel <laughs> movements. So you may continue now with show. I'm going to eat pie. This it begs to be thrown in your face. I, I, you know, I, I published. <laughs> Whoa, this. it's dripping! Holy cow! I, I published this <laughs> mail last week where um, someone wasn't too uh, nice to me in an email, and I kind of I put it in the mailbag, and I, I, I used it as an example of how not to write me an email, you know. Um, but I, I would also, I, I, with regards to this Microsoft and Russia story, I would like to elevate to, this to the how not to win an argument and debate class uh -huh. kind of thing, which is this. I have complained about such things as, you know, Google uh, doing business in China, even though clearly the government is, uh, you know, doing horrible things to their citizens and, you know, yada, 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 and saying that I don't think that Google or Yahoo or Microsoft or anyone should do business with this country um, if this is what's going on. But, of course, the market there is so great that a lot of these companies are just looking the it's other hard way. For them not and, to, yeah. And their excuse is, well, you know, you got to do, you got to adhere to the laws that are in the places where you do business, which is cute when you're talking about Europe or, you know, <laughs> some normal place. But when when we're talking about an authoritative government like that, I mean, it's it's a different thing. But do you think um, Microsoft? How complicit is Microsoft in this? I mean, they're just kind of actually really complicit, as it turns really? out. Really? Oh dear. Yeah. So apparently, their their lawyers have actually, in fact, worked in concert with the Russian government to 
uh, not, you know, either uh, make these charges or when people came back and said, this is baloney, they actually have legitimate licenses, you should call off the government, and they've said no. You know, so That's Microsoft, Microsoft, of course, has responded to this, and they're completely changing the way they do everything. But anyway, my to my debate class comment, um, when I complain about Google, or if I complain about Apple and the sweatshops they have in China, Apple being only one of many companies that does that kind of thing, you know, builds products in China because it's cheaper, and hey, guess why it's cheaper? Um, <laughs> because they're not paying those people anything. You know, we all kind of look the other way because we like to have a certain standard of living and i i'm as i do it as much as anybody I'm, I'm absolutely hypocritical here but i complain about everybody i'm not just complaining about microsoft's competitors i complain about microsoft whether they're in china making zunes which they are or whether in, they're in china with their search business which they are i've complained about those companies mm -hmm. but i've actually had a couple people come back to me in the wake of this microsoft and russia story and their response to this has been oh and you thought apple was bad and then there's a link to a story about microsoft and russia See, this has nothing about, this says nothing about Apple. Nothing. <laughs> you know, Apple does things that are bad for whatever reason, I think. Microsoft does too. This is an it's example. It's an independent of, story is what you're saying. Yes. In other words, th this is like changing the story. In other words, now that the company that I am supposedly a shill for has been caught doing something bad, everything I've ever written that's critical of Apple is now therefore false. No. <laughs> this is just this is awful i mean and i i hope i've communicated that here and as well as in the article i've written this clear. is absolutely indefensible yep 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 it's disgusting by the way there's a very good article in business week you must have read it on um terry gow the guy who uh, or guo the guy who uh, runs foxconn fascinating story I have not read this. Yes, the man who makes your iPhone. Well, Foxconn and, and, and a lot of other things. They make a lot of things. Is, is he holding a whip? <laughs> no. You know, in some it's, ways, it, this is why it cultural... When they, took a, when they took a picture of him, what, did a, a guy committing suicide fall behind him and get <laughs> they, snapped they, in the photo? They spent a lot of, of the article <laughs> sure. talking yeah. about that. Yeah, um, well... Very interesting, though. And I think it gives me a little bit more sympathy, frankly, for the situation there. But worth reading, anyway. I will look for that. Yeah, worth reading. And... Uh, Shame on, uh, on Microsoft if they are helping the, the government in Russia. That's it's unbelievable. Quash dissidents. It's the type of thing where you read the story and you think this can't possibly be true. Well, in fact, and I don't the, believe it. It's like I no, don't but then believe the next it. Day, like, Microsoft announced they were changing their uh, policies and would not be doing this anymore. Uh, horrible. I mean, they <laughs> they were doing it. You know, this, they didn't even come out and say we've done an internal. Re you know, we're going to do an internal review and let's see if we did that. Yeah, they said, no, we're not going to do this anymore. It's like, oh, really interesting. I want to think of like, oh, well, it was probably the Russians in the Microsoft office in Moscow that did it, not Americans, that kind of thing. No? I, I want to let them off the hook. I, <laughs> I don't want to let them off the hook. There's not, there's not a lot you can say not that's positive say. about this, other than that. They responded very quickly, and, and, you know, we'll see. But, I mean, I, apparently they've been – this has been an ongoing problem. I mean, there was a, a group, in, a, a human rights group, that in April published an open letter to Microsoft where they said, you are doing this. You have to stop. You're hurting people. And it was met with silence. And I think that's what touched off the New York Times uh, investigation where they finally published the story. And they – now, I understand that they have given blanket licenses to all the dissidents. So that this can't happen anymore. Well, right. With the the notion being that Russia should never be able to use uh, the possibility of software piracy as an excuse anymore. But you know, in typical Microsoft fashion, right? This <laughs> this deal has a time limit attached to it. Although they're going to review that. But I mean, it, it's get out of jail free for a limited time only. Yeah, it's interesting. Hmm. You know, we'll Mo see. Moving along. <laughs> yes. Bing is number two in the U.S. Bing outpaced Yahoo. Of course, Yahoo isn't Yahoo yeah. Bing. It is, but actually, this is just Bing, Bing by, itself. by itself. Yeah. So it's it has, Google, you know, Bing, we, Yahoo now. So, just Bing by itself is actually number two in the U.S. Uh, it, kind of a weird reversal there. We're not, I'm not even sure how that could have happened. Obviously, when you combine Bing with Yahoo, I mean that that thing is is number two. Um, but even even Bing combined with Yahoo is less than half of 
Google in the United States, although I, I suppose that's still pretty decent. Excuse me. You don't have to be number one to make money. Right, as we're about to find out in the smartphone business. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, you just have to be a player. Are you eating pie? I am eating pie. I'm sorry. <laughs> you caught me in a bite of delicious <laughs> Russian veg vegetable what pie. Is, what's, I'm sorry. I, so what, what's in this thing? It looks like a piece of clay. Oh, but it tastes What is that? Is that like a, a husk of something? What? No, no, this is the crust. I've eaten most of the insides, but it was a... Um, no, it's like a regular pie crust. Very good. No, what's that other and thing then there's over cabbage there? and that's oh that's uh, that is when in the Russian the winter, sometimes uh, you keep is it bark? What am I? What is that? <laughs> it's beef. It's beef. Oh, okay. <laughs> sometimes known as horse flesh. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Delicious. So literally, the the pie is like a side dish for a meal. Yeah. Well, we have a Thursday's lunch. Normally, you are not still on at this time. We started late because I have my board meeting, and uh, Thursday. His lunch is special twit lunch day at the cottage, and uh, Mara comes by and feeds us all. And she's like she, a, a mystery meal every week. You, it's you different every week. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll quote Sarah Lane, who says it's it's like going to a different wedding every week, <laughs> and uh, without the bride and groom, but the but the food and dancing are there, and uh, the pie. It, well, Mara always makes something different, and the pie is a it literally a. I thought it was kind of coincidental, a Russian vegetable pie. It's quite good. If you're ever out here on a Thursday, please stop by the cottage for lunch. Hey, my plan is to do just that. In someday. fact, Elsa, Javier, go on, go on out there, Ricardo. Have have some lunch, please. God, it's like a it's like a a mini, you know, UN in there today. <laughs> You've got. But there are no Russians. There. <laughs> However, we do have vodka. Um. No, as I was saying, people, the press always treats everything as a horse race. Are you number one? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. not matter. Yeah, it's it very isn't. black and white. It's business. It's yeah. okay to right. sell millions and millions of copies of something and be number two, or to be well, to have ten percent <laughs> of the search market and be yeah. number two. It's okay. I, I think it was actually a tech ad. It wasn't branded, but somebody else from Microsoft. I was kind of making fun of Windows Mobile, and he said, "You know, we sold like seven or eight million of those devices last month. You understand, we're still making a lot of money on that." Yeah. Yeah, you know, so and you you sort of look at Windows Mobile as this thing that's you know limping along like a wounded animal that's about to be put down, and I guess arguably it is, but but you know they kind of paid for the uh, research and development on that thing long ago, which is really obvious when you look at it. But anywho, there's not a lot of money go you know being put into it, so you know they're at, they're actually at the point where they're making money on the thing, so you know, whatever. But I think I think Windows Phone's gonna I think they're gonna do okay. Well, it's You're interesting. Eating pie, yeah. I mean, pie again. Don't, don't. <laughs> you, when you come to a sudden halt in those sentences, I have to swallow uh, quickly. I, I just could say, die. I, you know, you've either had a stroke or, <laughs> <laughs> you know. They said, the chat room says, wipe your face off. <laughs> it's like the, the type of question a cop asks you when he pulls you over just to make sure you're not drunk. I, yeah. You know? Put down just that. Wanna, just want to see how you handle the response mm -hmm. to this. What? Oh, yes. Delicious. <laughs> yes. No, officer. I wasn't no, driving. Officer. Right. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Let's get. Uh, uh, we're not going to do any more Windows Seven features of the week. We've done them all. Well, we haven't done them all, but I looked over the list of what was left, and it's the dregs. It's getting down there. Seeds yeah. and stems, my friend. It's not worth it. I think is we're hitting. There, there's there's a, a discussion that should occur around the, the virtualized, you know, well, not virtualization, but the uh, VHD functionality in Windows 7, you know, the ability to mount virtual drives and all that. And I think that's an article I should write, and, and we don't have to discuss that on the podcast. And the other stuff is just minor and uninteresting. So as we discussed previously, I want to at some point switch over to a Windows Phone feature of the week. But the reason I haven't done that yet is it's not out yet. And I, I don't want to talk about this too far ahead of, Right. When people are actually going to have devices. Although I, I we, am getting excited. Yes. So we will we'll get there. But uh, I had this idea independently, but someone actually emailed me and suggested this as well. And I thought it, it is a great idea. So I think for the next few weeks, um, maybe we can do an Internet Explorer 9 feature of the week. That's, um, a, that's a great idea. You know, for a couple of months or whatever it is. And because uh, there's some awesome stuff going on there. And as has been the case with the Windows 7 feature of the week stuff. Uh, this is something I'll expand out into a full article on the site over the weekend. And um, and we, I, I think we talked about this a little bit earlier when we did the overview. But one of the, I think the 
the very coolest thing, if I had to pick one thing in Internet Explorer 9 that really sets it apart, because there are a bunch of things there, it is this ability to pin websites to the taskbar in Windows 7 just like you can with application shortcuts. And it really makes these things the same thing because, you know, logically speaking, they are kind of the same thing. You know, whether you're using, uh, on my desktop computer, I don't have that much. My laptop has a bunch of stuff pinned on there. But, you know, there are sites like uh, Django and Pandora that are media related or my own website, um, you know, the Google uh, Gmail and Google Calendar stuff, all the Windows Live stuff, whatever it is. Those things that you want to access every single day, they happen to be websites, but you know, you use them interchangeably with the stuff that's installed in your computer, like Microsoft Word or iTunes or Zoom or whatever. Um, why should they be commingled? And I, I think what they've done there is, uh, again, in retrospect, somewhat obvious, but uh, they've done it in such an awesome integrated way. Um, I really think this puts IE over the top. And if you're familiar with the way Chrome works, you know that you can make these application shortcuts in Chrome. And I think on the surface, it sounds like these are kind of the same thing, and I'm telling you that they're not because uh, the ability that you uh, as a site owner has to customize these things are unbelievable, and it doesn't require any complicated code or, you know, redoing or whatever, or making an application. It's just simple, often just HTML code or some very simple JavaScript. So simple, even I can do it. And um, anyway, I'll have a full article about, uh, about this over the weekend. I'm really excited about the pin side stuff, and I think it's... I think it's going to put IE9 over the top. That's exciting. Yeah, it's neat. I, I will immediately uh, install uh, Windows uh, 7 and uh, IE9. Please do, sir. I will do that immediately. Please do. Uh, we do not have an audible pick of the week. So once again, if you would like to take that sort of Shannara and stick it where the sun don't shine, I'd appreciate it. We will That's get such to a good it. story about this book, too. It's <laughs> killing me. <laughs> How about a Windows 7 tip of the week? What do you say? So I would like to make this one slightly interactive because I... I uh, I, this has been misconstrued, but I, I wrote an article about a week and a half ago, probably now that where I said, you know, is it time as as a Windows user to say enough with this Apple stuff? You know, oh that, yes, iTunes, uh, is it, Safari, the software is tough. Quick now, time. As I've discovered this week, uh, looking at Apple's new iPods, actually they're all really good. You know, oh, in their own, oh, they'll have. Paul, Paul, Paul. No, they are. So it's hard. I understand that it's difficult. I mean, the iPod Touch is fantastic. But one of the things I want, maybe this is something the chat room could provide some feedback on, because what I'd like to do is discuss some of the alternatives, right? Um, uh, you, especially from a Windows 7 perspective. In other words, uh, when we talk about something like the Apple TV, if you're going to, from a Windows 7 perspective, you know, you want a device out in your living room that's going to integrate with the native digital media sharing capabilities of Windows 7 or the Zoom. I think the Zoom is an acceptable alternative or add-on to the Microsoft stuff. You know, it is Microsoft, but to the Windows stuff. You know, an Xbox 360, a WDTV, or whatever it might be. Um, I want to look, I want to sort of, and I don't know if we can do this very, I don't want to, obviously we can't spend an hour on this, but um, if we kind of go down the list of the Apple stuff that's available to Windows users, you know, what do you... Leo, you or you in the chat room think, you know, is a viable alternative. So just looking at something like we like last week, for example, we talked about um, the VLC player as an alternative to QuickTime player for playing media files. You know, the Zune PC right. soft is an obvious alternative to, uh, to iTunes. OK, Th that one's pretty obvious. But looking at the other products, you know, the iPods, uh, the iPhone, the iPad and the Apple TV, you know, how do you replace that stuff? If you want to, you know, uh, remove yourself from the, uh, from the Apple world, how do you do that? And I and just also want to throw out there, the reason I'm doing this is not because I don't feel that this stuff has value or worth or is any good or anything like that, but it is very clear from the feedback I got to this article that there is a huge wellspring of people out there who have zero interest in this Apple stuff, either are never going to go there because they can't stand it or did go there and are just tired of it. And, and that really is the impetus for this. It's not, you know, Paul hates Apple and let's, you know, all, you know, pick up the torches and go burn the castle. I, I have Apple stuff all over my house. I mean, I'm not, well, I think I, the biggest one, and I hear this over and over again, the biggest pain point is iTunes on windows. That's awful. It's just that's, awful. And, and I know, was, to be honest, if you're going to use an iPhone, you have to use you're, it. Absolutely. And that's the thing. If you, 
you have an by and large an iPod, unless you're just doing music, I guess. Um, an iPad, obviously, an iPhone. You, you have to use it. You have to use iTunes. I At mean, least to activate them and uh, to copy. I guess you can use Media Monkey to uh, copy music over. It's all or double stuff, twist or something. I, I am, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. I, I, I have zero interest in, I still want to use an iPod, but how can I do all the other stuff? No, no, you have to go cold turkey. You know, living with um, iTunes, I mean, I had people, you know, write me, they said, it's, it's, it's like you're saying I'm living with cancer. You know, it's like I, I have good days and bad days or something. You know, it's awful. Um, the way that people have described this to me. I mean, the email that I've gotten about this iTunes thing is unbelievable. And uh, I would like to, I'd like this to be constructive. I don't want this to be a, a teardown. But anyway, I mean, looking at the iPods and the iPhones and the iPads and the Apple TVs, I mean, what do you, what do you think personally? And then is there anything of value in the, um, you know, in the chat room that I can... Don't ask me because no. no, I'm, I'm mostly a Mac sure. guy, so... But you're an Android user, so I mean, uh, you have obviously found. Well, I have a way the I have an analogous problem, which is yeah, how to use Android on a Mac, and I right. use double. Oh, I should. For I, oh, I, I uh, actually to step back a bit. You asked about the Mac and Windows Phone. Yeah. Um, this is actually public information. Um, there will be a solution on the Mac for doing um, device sync. You won't have Zoom PC software, but if you go back and look at what Microsoft did with the Kin, and they. Uh, uh, there was some kind of a third party that uh, produced... Oh, yeah, probably Missing Sync or one of those Something companies. very much yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, there will be a version of that for Windows Phone. Mm, good. Yeah. Um, there will be a way to get video content, for example. Um, not from the Zoom store, but video content that's unprotected that maybe you ripped from a DVD or whatever. Right. Uh, you will be able to do that with Windows Phone on the Hallelujah. Mac. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. So should people email you if they have ideas? Uh, how do you want to handle that? Yeah, so that would probably be the easiest way. I'd like to do this over the weekend sometime, um, preferably by the end of Saturday. But and I've already gotten, a, I, like I said, I've already gotten a lot of email. But I'm, I'm, in, I'm particularly interested in the, the the best solution would be something that works across the board, and that's why I worked or I discussed in that original article the Zoom stuff because it comes the closest. It's not complete, you know. There is no Zoom iPad, obviously. Um, Windows Phone is not quite out yet, but I think Windows Phone is the you know becomes the phone, but. Looking at the particular products, you know, the iPods, the iPhone, the iPad, the Apple TV, you know, what would you pick in each of those categories as a Windows 7 centric alternative? You know, uh, Windows 7 has incredible digital media sharing capabilities. If you have a device like one of the things we noticed in um, Germany was that they, uh, they had a DLNA 2 compliant HDTV. I could actually play content. From my Windows 7 laptop to the TV. Isn't that wireless. cool? I love DLNA. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I don't think a lot of people, or I think a lot of people don't know that this stuff is out there. Uh, that these capabilities even exist. You know, I have a lot of people write me and say, well, yeah, but you don't understand. You know, I, iTunes has this thing and I can, you know, I can uh, wirelessly play music in the other room using this little base station thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. I do that too. But there are alternatives to that on the Windows side. And I, I think it doesn't get a lot of press. I think a lot of people don't understand it's out there. So I'm just curious, you know, if, I, if there are people out there that do this stuff, I'd like to hear from them. So please, yeah. Email, email in, to paul at twit.tv or what do you want to do? I don't need, do I get email? <laughs> do I get email? I, I think you do. Know. Oh, um, I, uh, in you case wanna, I don't. Use, use my, your own mail. Use your own mail. Yeah, my, my main, I'm not sure that I do. So I'm, uh, my main email is my last name, Tharot, at gmail.com. And it's uh, T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T. -T. Sure it is. It is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm sure that's the right. No, no, that's it. <laughs> he knows how to spell his own name, folks. Um, let us see. I guess we really kind of did the software picks of the week, but you can reiterate. Yeah, I just mentioned choose. them. Just, yeah, reiterate. I, if you haven't, Internet Explorer 9 Beta is out. It's awesome. It's stable, fast, standards compliant, hardware accelerated, awesome Windows 7 features especially. It's a no-brainer on Windows 7. It really... It kind of completes the package. When you look at uh, the stuff that Microsoft's doing with Windows Live Essentials, the new version, and some of the Windows Live services coming up, and this IE9 stuff, I mean, it really, it's kind of coming together. It's, it's really interesting. So IE9, awesome. Uh, and then, you know, for you developers out there, Windows Phone 7 developer tools, like Brandon said, they're all completely free. It includes the Visual Studio version for the phone with the emulator, uh, the Expression Blend tool, which is your, um, you know, visual designer for the user interfaces, lots of awesome documentation. 
And, uh, you know, and I've been blogging about the stuff. He mentioned some of the video stuff. Early on this year, one of the things I blogged about on the, pho on the phone book blog was, you know, to catch up to Apple especially, because Apple really sets the bar. Microsoft needs to have awesome documentation. But I look at what Apple does, and you see the stuff that's available in iTunes U around all of the free content for learning how to program on these iOS devices and so forth. And you think, how can Apple, how can Microsoft ever catch up with that? And actually, there are, there are tremendous video resources, both for people that just want to know about the phone and then for developers who want to know about how to program for the phone. And Microsoft produced content at Mix in March, at TechEd in uh, June, uh, Developer Days, uh, the Jumpstart stuff in August, and some other things I've probably forgotten. And they have the Channel 9 stuff. There is an amazing amount of video content, uh, aside from just the printed documentation, you know, the uh, electronic documentation. Incredible video uh, resources out there. So you should check that stuff out as well. And that's all at developer.windowsphone.com. Paul Thrott, you're a gentleman and a scholar. It was great to have a guest on every once in a while, especially if it's somebody like Brandon who... Uh, yeah, who people is... ask me why I don't do certain things. You know, like, why don't we ever have guests on and... I, uh, laziness uh, I don't know just I don't still think of it you know or why don't we do a live uh, Q&A every week I just I forget I would I'd be I'm happy to do it every week I and uh, we don't have time this week obviously but um, you know this is something we should do more often and we, we there's no reason we can't have people on more often I'm we don't have to do it more often. social I don't have to leave my house to make that happen I mean <laughs> that's what we have Skype for <laughs> yeah Paul Therat is the editor-in-chief of the super site for Windows and uh, what, what is he pointing at what is he poking <laughs> stop poking me <laughs> if you go to super site for Windows winsupersite.com he'll's article uh, uh, on uh, this uh, uh, shared folders thing will be up soon uh, and uh, and of course all the things we've talked about today uh, hey, what shared folders what are you talking you know about? in uh, Windows uh, 7 your Windows 7 in, feature in, in pins sites. <laughs> no, no, you were going to do the shared uh, volumes, shared volumes. Oh, no, this is the VHD, the, the VHD, virtual hard yeah, drive. Virtual uh, hard yeah. drive, that's what I meant. You know, <laughs> I am not good on the terminologies, but you I see, Leo, Yeah. Let me tell you how technology works. Yeah, would you please? Because I don't get it. I don't get it. He's also the uh, news editor for Windows IT Pro and uh, the author that's of stuff. Windows Phone 7, which will be out any minute now. That's right. This thing is all screwed up. Yeah, this whole show has been like that. We should fix. We should redo let's just start. Whole. Can we start over? Let me get Brandon yeah. on the line. And, uh... So IE nine just came out. <laughs> Paul, I'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye bye.